morning, everyone. Welcome to the Wareham Finance Committee. This is Wednesday, April 6th. It's 6.30. We're in room 27 of the Wareham Town Hall, and we're reviewing the articles that are going to appear on the town, annual town meeting and the special town meeting warrant. Uh, may I have the clerk call the roll, please? To my far right, Jody Smith, then Vice Chair Dave Hurd, Chairman Bernie Smith, or Bernie Pigeon. To my far left, Matt Rose, and myself, Jerry Stefanski. We have a quorum. Okay, we'll go right to um, our matters that are before us with the article S14, which is a Tremont nail lease. And Ken, kind enough to <clears throat> explain what's going on on that. And uh, appreciate it, Ken. Please go forward. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I think I want to do is I'll, I'll go back to the uh, beginning of this, which is back in uh, 2020 when we put out an RFP for a master developer of the Tremont Nail Factory. And that was based on the vision that we had created in uh, 2018 for the, the mixed use uh, uh, plan for the, the Tremont Nail Factory, uh, artist studios, museum, uh, cafe. Uh, restaurant, uh, office space, residential, whatever was going to work in the site. That's what we were looking for. But we got a, a proposal that came in from a developer, and we negotiated with them a, a disposition and development agreement. Um, one of the things you have to realize is there are several challenges associated with the uh, creation of a project like this. There's permitting you have to go through. There's potentially some community opposition, or at least there's, there's community demands that have to be followed. In the, in the format of the, of the project. There's um, uh, construction costs that are increasing. Um, there's a number of risks involved. And so to get, to get a return on investment, they look for a long-term lease, which is 30 to 60 years at least. Um, and so we don't have that available under our town bylaws. We only have a five-year lease as the allowed length of the term of the lease. So uh, what we're doing is going to town meetings to ask for uh, the, the extension of the lease to uh, terms to uh, a 30-year lease plus two 30-year options available. <coughs> uh, now, what we'll be doing in, when we, under this lease is we'll be getting property taxes. We'll be getting the maintenance of the utilities and the buildings. We'll be getting... Um, uh, a, a rental fee as well. We'll be getting a, um, a base <coughs> rent fee that will increase in, in the percentage over time and uh, a percentage of the income from the rental of the, rental, uh, of the spaces in the, in the property. So we, we, uh, it looks like a pretty good deal right now, uh, but what we need is to have that longer-term lease available to us. So that's the, the sum of the of the uh, article that we have before town meeting. Any questions? Questions? Jerry? Is there any downside to three 30-year leases that you come across? Um, the, in that we can't uh, tear down the buildings when we want to. And you wouldn't anyway, would you? No, I don't think so. Okay. But there, there's, there's, there's nothing There's other nothing there. really that... that um, uh, I mean, it's going to outlive us, uh, most of the people in this room, but um, there's nothing that uh, uh, stops us from getting money, continual uh, rents off of the property, and uh, uh, saves us from uh, having to maintain it. So, are, are these th and, and then these individual 30-year leases are like a, a renegotiation of all the stuff that's in the lease. The yeah, we have to dates, go through the same process with the um, RFP to uh, do an option for another 30-year lease. Okay. Has the individuals proposed any possibilities that might, might occur within, uh, in their process of developing? Uh, in, in what regard, you mean? Uh, do they have anything in mind that they may either renovate to uh, accommodate a particular business that may be interested? Uh, yeah, they've uh, they've put together a vision plan in the proposal that they submitted on the on the uh, the latest RFP, the second RFP that went out, and um, uh, it includes a, a museum, a restaurant on the waterfront, um, artist studios and office space in the uh, main building, 
uh, a residential uh, uh, building as a separate uh, structure on the site, uh, possibly two residential structures. Um, and uh, continuation of the, of the marijuana production facility in the steel building. Do they have any escape clause, so to speak, and whereby if we feel that they are failed to uh, meet their requirements in uh, developing the property that uh, we can uh, pull back on the leasing or something, release them? Yeah, well, that's what the disposition and development agreement is for. That's what we're going to negotiate next. And in that, we'll have certain requirements that they go through the permitting process and develop the plan in accordance with what the wishes of the town are. And when, once we see what they've come up with, then we'll sign the lease. And we have, we can then uh, at that point decide as to whether or not the, the lease is, is going to be acceptable to the town. Any other questions? I just wanted to comment that your time frame is interesting. You've gone from 2018 to 20 to 20, now it's 22. None of these things happen fast. <coughs> and I appreciate you and everyone else has been working on it for that length of time to bring it to a conclusion and bring it to a successful conclusion. Yeah, uh, it's frustrating sometimes because it takes so long, but this is public process and uh, it, it moves at the speed of a bicycle, not a bullet train. <laughs> yep. That's a bicycle with a flat tire. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not your committee. <laughs> Questions? Comments? I'm sorry I was late. I'm, I'm curious about the, the dam. Uh, well, we're looking at the dam at the same time, and um, uh, we're looking at the, uh, uh, removing the dam to uh, increase the safety and uh, uh, increase the, the passage of, uh, of fish species through the, 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 the way. What does that do to the water table or the water height in the ponds that are ahead of the dam or behind the dam? Uh, actually, uh, with the design that we're looking at, it probably won't affect the, the, the pond except at the, at the uh, Elm Street. Uh, because what we'll do is under the culvert that runs underneath the uh, uh, Route 28, we'll put uh, uh, something dam. that, yeah, another dam that, that holds back the water from the upper reaches so that those people living up above it don't get have any, uh, won't have any, any effects from the change of elevation. Can we turn it into a power plant? <laughs> we could. There's enough elevation there that you could do a power plant. But we have uh, Tremont uh, Pond as an option for that. And we have somebody studying the, the uh, option of, of restoring the uh, hydroelectric power supply at the Tremont Pond Dam. Thank you. Sure. And, and that dam has a different name. It does not call Tremont, isn't it? No, um, it's Tremont Pond, Tremont Pond Dam. Oh. Now, the, and it the, leaks too, is it? The, the, the one at, at the Tremont Nail Factory is called the Parker Mills That's Pond the Dam. one I was thinking of, yes. And it leaks. Yeah, it leaks. <laughs> Into the building. Yeah, it's part of the building. <laughs> Anything else, gentlemen? Nothing? Thank you very much, Ken. All right, thank you Appreciate very much. your information. Thank you. Now the next item on the agenda is the Solar Energy Article S15. Good evening. Good evening. How are you this evening? I am well. Thank you for having us. Thank you for allowing the committee to come. Um, four of us from the Solar Committee are here tonight. Um, Carl Schultz, Jackie Nichols, Denise Wolk um, have all been instrumental in um, getting this bylaw done. We've, we started out, we were working with the original bylaw, um, looked at it, um, had a lot of public input, and we've prepared what we believe um, is a reasonable alternative and will meet the needs going forward of our community um, to protect not only the community but the environment 
and also to help um, the, the state meet some of its energy goals. So we have a little presentation put out that um, we'd like to, to share with you. We had presented this basically to the Board of Selectmen last night, so pardon me if you've already seen it. Um, our primary goals was to acknowledge the state's, um, the Commonwealth's renewable energy objectives. We acknowledge that the landowner has a right to develop solar should that be their, their choice. And, but we also respect that the citizens of Wareham have a right to clean drinking water, freedom from noise and glare. Um, so those are um, you know, some of the, the things that we've taken into account. Some of the significant changes from the existing bylaw is that the planning board is now the sole granting authority. The ZBA is on board with that. This will put the expertise all within the same um, uh, granting authority within the town, which seems to make sense. Um, we're limiting the size to no more than five megawatts DC um, in order to balance the the competing land uses and understanding that significant contribution that Wareham has already made. Now, going forward with this, I just wanted to say that we have about 19 solar farms with many others already um, being per in the permitting process and that this, the 2020 master plan shows the need for industrial and commercial space um, as opposed to simply solar because solar doesn't add those good paying jobs long term that we need to um, in reinvigorate our community. Okay, some of the changes include um, more protections for our sole source aquifer and our globally rare pine barrens and our unique community. Um, we're requiring more rigorous studies and there are more requirements for the noise, lighting, glare, visual screening, runoff studies, and potential environmental impacts. We're also asking the proponents to do historical and cultural um, heritage evaluations. And we're making sure that people understand that there's a difference between um, sand mining, graveling, et cetera, and solar, those are two different issues and they've been conflated so many times that um, while we're limiting grading and earth removal as per section 595.7, um, the main thing is that all earth removal must be approved and consistent with article three of the town's bylaws. Okay, just to make it clear so that everyone is on the same page when we're starting out. Um, some of the changes include Siting is prohibited in what's referred to as chapter 97, open space or um, any conservation land, the wetland resources areas, state historic register properties, and priority estimated habitat and critical natural landscape, or where at least 50% of the parcel is designated such on Biomap 2. Now that is consistent with the state's smart DOER regulations um, so we feel that we're in good company looking at those as environmental conditions. <clears throat> this is um, one of the biomaps that's used as their basis for that. And the next map shows our um, master plan for, for our vision. Okay, some of the changes include that our restricted siting is allowed with site plan review for projects between 250 kW and 5,000 in all districts except the smallest zoning districts, small residential districts. Um, setback is 75 feet from the property line, not from the nearest residence. Um, so that um, should definitely improve, um, you know, screening, et cetera. Um, diversity of native vegetation should be used for screening which will enhance um, what the habitats and what's left of, of the environment. 
The use of chemically treated timber poles is prohibited for use as mounting poles. So I, I see you smiling, but we've all driven up Route 58 and seen what, you know, what can happen if you aren't specific There's about it. I know, I know. And you know what? Those are only the ones you can see from the street. There's more. Um, but that, that being said, some of the other changes are that fencing is required only for the safety and can be eliminated if it's deemed by the, by the planning board that it would be beneficial for the wildlife movement. Um, you know, in particular areas where it's, you know, on the riverfront or some such thing where there's, um, you know, a lot of movement there. Battery energy storage systems may be included only as ancillary to on-site um, generation. Abandonment and decommissioning sureties increased to 200% from the 125 right now, um, basis of the cost estimate, to ensure the ability to restore the property. Um, in case you haven't heard, the planning board voted 500 to support this article. And we would very much um, like your support as well. But at this point, um, I would ask if there's any questions for either myself or any of the members of the board or members of our committee. Jody, <coughs> I, I hope you wrote this down. Hope you wrote this down from last night. What is about the acreage size when you're talking about the, the development? I know I heard that I was laying on the couch and I didn't write anything down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, the, the acreage can vary depending upon how, what type of panels they're putting in, um, what the efficiency of those panels is, and how they're positioned within the, the parcel itself. But ballpark, five megawatts, maybe a total of 20, it could be less than that. Um, and I've seen figures as low as 10 or 15. It depends. But right now, um, many of our projects that have already been built and are presumably profitable at this point are around three, um, and that excludes some of the large ones that have been permitted but not yet built. Okay? Yeah, and I know I heard it last night. I said, I hope you wrote this down. The, the other thing, the states is going all in on, you know, I always use the, the thinking that you can make it more restrictive. You can't, is, is, are you going to be pretty much in line with what the state, I'm sure you've seen what the state's trying to do. Um, the, the state's trying to, to put solar anywhere and everywhere. And what we're hoping will happen with this is that people will, that landowners People who have parking lots, people who have large rooftops, the only commercial rooftop solar that I'm aware of is on top of Target. We have how many giant roofs in this town that need solar on them, in my opinion? How many parking lots do we have that could have canopies over them? There are a ton of them, and, and those are uh, currently allowed, they're current. They're allowed under this new bylaw, and that's what we really would like to see happen. Um, but it's a matter that it may not be as profitable for the developer to do that, but it could be profitable for the organization, the company, the town, whomever owns that property, to lease out that airspace. I mean, those are potential income sources. Is that something the town should look at? In, in new big box buildings. I'm not. I don't know of any coming into town, but kind of make it part of the planning the per design. se. The I, design, however you want to. Yeah, but that that's outside. Um, revising those building codes is outside of what our purview was. And I'm but just absolutely. asking if that's something the town should take a little how to look at. The, the town needs to take a, a wider look at that, and I think the state has to take a wider look at that, too. Um, Jackie, did you want to say something? I do want to bring Nancy's there. Okay. And Nancy, you want to point out the new 
elementary school we just built, the uh, roof is specifically designed to accommodate solar panels. And, and have we put them on there? It's up to the school department. They can get revenue by leasing that building roof. Because the, all the utilities that typically appear on top of the building, mm -hmm. it was specifically a building adjacent to the school was specifically instructed to house them so that both the uh, roof is clear. I mean, that, that's excellent to hear. Um, but my question is, is why, didn't, why aren't we already doing that? And I know that's a conversation that with the school department. Um, but that's the kind of thing that has to be thought of and done, you know, preemptively. In the municipal so, yeah. buildings instructions, especially with MSBA, you get credits for going green and as green as possible. And that's something we were able to uh, include in the design and it got us up to 74 points reimbursable. Which is, which is fabulous. Um, I look forward to the time that, that our school budget is actually going down a little bit because we've taken that into account and gotten that revenue. That would be very nice. Um, anyway, I think Jackie had a, a thought. Uh, in Hi. just a moment, Jackie, let the record show that Dominic and Tom have joined the meeting. Thank you, Jackie. Um, I just wanted to uh, clarify about the, the size of the parcels for solar. The way that uh, we've been looking at the bylaws to try to allow for a little bit more flexibility b because we want it screened, we want it, um, we want natural habitat, and we want everything to work well, which is why we're a little iffy on, you know, what exactly the parcel size will be. But we kind of took a look at what a five megawatt would, you know, take up for just space, and that would be like 12 to 15 acres, what we were looking at. Mm -hmm. um, I took a look at some of the, pro the projects that we already have in place um, over the past years, that at least that I've been here, and just taking a look at what we have for our current megawatts versus um, acreage of the lease sites, we came. I came up with just like an average of three megawatts over like 12 acres. So um, what we're doing here is definitely allowing for some flexibility, um, but um, so that we can have the protection that we need. Um, first of all, and um, also I just wanted to mention that um, while Nancy is correct in erecting solar does not create a lot of permanent jobs, the income to the town over the 20 year lease is a passive income and doesn't cost us. So, and now that the law has changed, we're, you know, we won't spend our time in court fighting to get that income. Question, Jerry. Uh, Jackie, or, or uh, how many uh, solar fields? How many are operational, and how many are approved under under our current bylaws, but not operational? I do not have um, the, um, an answer to that because I only see them when they're done, pretty much. Which would mean they're operational. Which would mean that they're at least you know in the pilot stage. Now, I do know that the, the bigger Borregos that we just came through last year, I, kn I know about those. Um, but as far as completely operational, I think there are a few out there now that are approved but are not operational yet. So um, that's always a moving target. And I don't know what's in the planning pipeline because it hasn't got to me yet as a taxation. I, I just like, I'm just <laughs> trying to get a, a sense of both operational and approved, but not yet operational. Um, I believe that we do have that. Yeah, so from the planning board perspective, <clears throat> the number that we've been using for planned in the pipeline and approved are 19 projects, and I think representing about 596 acres when all built out. But that's what's either operational, in the pipeline approved, or in the pipeline with zoning protection. Total of 19? That's the number approximately, okay. yes, at about 596 acres. It, it, under our, our current bylaw, so that it's, a, it's a given that they can go with yes. us. Okay. Yes, yes. And, and then it's my understanding also, Carl, that there are more that have freeze plans on them? That, that, that number includes, Is that, that, that it, yes. That's my impression. I think there are maybe six more that aren't on that. 
Because I have another list that has 19 on it without those. But, it, but, but yeah. But there's, yeah. Everybody be, has be, their own list. Well, be, it's, be, it's because, you know, there's still, there are freeze plans on them. So you know they're going to maybe do it, but maybe not. If all became operational, how many acreage, how many acres would that be? That's, that's why I gave you, I think it's 596 acres. Around 600 acres. I think the 19 that are permit and active, yeah. all inclusive. Yeah. That's the number we used, and, and then we, we, the planning board has been using that. Ken, we've been dealing with Ken on that. That's the number yeah. we've been using for planning. We'll go with that. <coughs> it's, it's it's large enough. enough. It's not going it, to be close enough for government work. Yes. Well, yes. it <laughs> what it shows is that Wareham has done a lot of solar. Mm. You know that we're. We're working with trying to get, you know, renewable energy. Um, the, other, the other interesting note, and I think Ken showed this to us when we started, is Wareham is probably second in the region for a number of solar projects. Uh, I think Dartmouth was first, mm -hmm. uh, Wareham is second, although I know there's a big push going on in Rochester right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still a small amount of acreage. <coughs> it's not that much. It's about two percent, I think. Yeah. Two percent of the land in there. Yeah. On that, on this five hundred acres. Where do you get yeah. help? A young lady in the back. Yes. Um, my name is Denise Walcom. Was a member of the solar committee as well. Just wanted to mention a couple of things. One is that the way that we are looking at this is is um, this should be considered a living document. The technology is changing, um, and the the. Um, the, the idea of trying to limit it to more than no more than five mega gazillion watt size was with the thought of as technology um, tends to do as it as it evolves and changes and gets better it tends to get smaller so our hope is that they'll be able to have these kind of large scale um, solar projects taking up even less land um, you know the idea was also to uh, th that um, we're trying to encourage responsible development and put some guardrails on this as the state is, has its own solar goals. I mean, we're all trying to get away from $5 a gallon gas um, and from fossil fuels. We're all trying to get green. Um, and, and solar is one part of that portfolio. I heard the hydroelectric you know, mentioned earlier as uh, a possibility for the rebuilt dam if we did that. There's wind, there are all kinds of things, and there's stuff that we don't know about yet. So keeping that bylaw flexible um, and, and um, making it a living document that can evolve over time would be important. And we were very careful as we heard about the att Attorney General's response to the existing um, piece to really consider that and think about what would be acceptable to the Commonwealth um, and, and, and how far can we go to try to protect um, both the environment and the, the, the lovely community that we have um, while still allowing for generation of power and allowing landowners who at the, at the end of it own these pieces of property to have some flexibility about doing it. As my last comment is that we were also thinking about small farmers um, and them uh, having the ability to rotate that in on a 20 year land lease um, and help keep their farms together. So in places where farmland is sited in a, in a place that's not um, on, on sensitive habitat, that's another option for them. Um, so those are some of the things that we took into consideration as we tried to do that. Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Nancy, is the, the life expectancy of one of these leases would be about 12 years. Is that the equivalent of life expectancy of the panels? 20, 20, 20 years. years. Like 20 the years. leases are generally 20 years. Yes. Um, and the panels are not expected to live that long. So they're expected to swap them out, and it depends upon, you know, what sort of technology they have at that point in time and whether or not um, that's all, whether or not they've, Come up with something better if they're going to do just straight out replacement. If they've replaced a lot of things over the course of the, you know, over the maintenance plan, that's one of the things we've put in there is that there has to be 
a specific um, operation and maintenance plan, and it's you know buttoned up a little bit more than it had been in the past. Yeah, my concern would be that at the end of 20 years, they're no longer useful, and so they're walking away from them, leaving them in place. They can't well, do that. that's that's they why can't. there's a 20%, that, the 200% the the of the decommissioning. Mm -hmm. If they walk away from it, the town has 200% of what um, the cost estimate was, and those are reevaluated every five years. Yeah, one of the things we're dealing with is very few of these have been decommissioned anywhere. Yes, I know. So, which is why we put a five-year clause in there that it has to be reviewed at least every five years. And if we learn that the cost is much higher, then they have to they'll have to deal with that. Plus, there is a cost escalator, a two percent cost escalator year over year and the estimate for cost for decommissioning. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, uh, one of our members, Norma, who's not out here this evening, uh, she made a comment that uh, the restrictions on tree cutting evidence should be offered in the PowerPoint or other documents on pre precisely how loss of the forest affects health, safety, and welfare. And that would just be uh, informational that the, you would want to guard that issue. Yeah, um, I think the, the biggest thing with that is protection of our water source. Mm. Um, we have all heard um, that Wareham has good water. We have 54 miles of coastline. We have watersheds that feed that, those um, streams and aquifers. <coughs> we have good drinking water now. It's going to cost a lot more to repair it. Um, and to clean it up if we let it get um, uh, decimated at this point. So keeping the natural um, soils and the sand all in place is in our best interest as a community. Um, whether or not that is the landowner's right to take out that sand mining, that's a different conversation but that's one that they then have with the Board of Selectmen over time. Um, but in terms of the forest, it's natural cooling, it's absorbing the water, the runoff, um, it's protecting people's wells. Those are the kind of things that we're looking at in terms of health and welfare for the communities. Anything else? Yes, Jerry. Um, you showed a chart that has like bio two could you go back to that chart and explain to me what that is? Um, that has <laughs> the Biomap 2 is the state um, map of endangered species, protected habitat, um, critical natural landscapes, um, those sorts of things. So the dark, darkest green is where it is core, ha what they call core habitat. And the lighter green is critical natural landscape. And most of the light tan gray green um, is open space, not open space, but space that is not within any of those two categories. So green's a no-go. Light green right. and, no, and dark green right. are no-go? Right. And much of the dark green that you're seeing near the bottom of Wareham is waterways at this point, um, and much of what you're seeing up on north of 25, 495. Uh, a great deal of that is already under conservation. Okay. Um, it doesn't so. look like they got the message over at Otis there with all the lead in, in the ground. Um, I. I understand that, but it is still, um, it's still considered um, pine barrens, and it is still critical habitat. Um, that's all I can say is um, the critters are loving it. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and the biomap too is part of what the, the state is using um, to uh, to uh, in their smart um, energy guideline. Um, so. This aligns with what they say they're thinking about placement of um, energy okay. generation facilities. 
So um, depending upon, there are other layers to the map and you would have to put in specific um, areas that you wanted to see if it was 50% natural heritage or habitat and, or not, and then we go from there. But it's there's- a, It's an interactive map that you can find online that, that is in very interesting to look at, um, yeah. just in the general scope of things. But this is what the uh, Department of Energy, um, the, the DOER, has um, put forth as something that they are using as guidelines. Yeah. Um, we also have a, I don't know if you guys had, we had sent around, I get sent to Bernie a bit of our handout. If anyone has not seen it or would like a copy of it, I have a few copies of that. And there's the link to our, the entire um, article, which has the link to that map in it. Um, and if you have the electronic version of the flyer that Nancy sent you, there's actually a link to the map on there as yeah. well. You have to you have to set it for Wareham, and then you can select the uh, because it automatically goes to the whole thing. But it's pretty easy to get where you want to see it go, and then you can select the different map layers to see what the the contains. I'm sure they have a copy of it. And we do with so much paperwork during this time period. Yep. In your spare time, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Nancy, as an FYI, uh, in the past we've had some problems with uh, with previous solar articles as well as articles on the warrant that you have already gone through with the town council, and he's approved this as to form. Mm -hmm. So it should be acceptable in that context. Whatever else they may have that conflicts with it, he doesn't pass on that. It's just as to form, it will be acceptable up to to moving up to the attorney general. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, any other comments Anything or else? questions? Any or? questions, gentlemen? Thank you for you and your committee. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank we you. Hope that Appreciate you it. Our, our article. We've worked really hard on it. Excellent. No, when you're involved, Jackie, how can we not? Pass it around if anyone wants to. Thank you. Thank you. We have a dog park. <laughs> and we have a dog park. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. Don't break a guy with a clock. That guy was way off. Yeah, no ceremony, though. No ceremony, yeah. And he's going to bring your dogs out and let them bark. Well, I just want to say one thing. Myself. I said that 500 acres of solar. It's two percent of the land in Wayham. It's way wrong. Way wrong. Five hundred acres is not Okay, the next item we have like Article eighteen on the regular the annual I town meeting. We've asked Jim to come back and help hopefully uh, provide us with more information. I think uh, you all have copies of the most recent uh, budget. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. We'll do you. You're not on the schedule until another 15 minutes, but I mean, that's okay. Oh, I, oh, I thought it was us. You don't want to take credit for efficiency? <laughs> don't go there. Well, I'll get to listen. <laughs> nope. Are we not? Oh, yeah, I thought you just called us. I thought he was Jim, Jim, do you have another meeting you have to go Jim. to? Jim Kim. Uh, oh. No. No. We, we, we okay, thought you no. were joking. Stay right, stay right there. Stay right there. I thought he had another meeting to go to. Uh, you know what? Really? Yeah. So isn't there someone in between us? Yes, yeah, so I was going to next one would be the schools. Oh, go ahead. I thought there was like, is this 18? That was a school budget. Yeah. Our apologies. We thought yeah. we heard something we didn't. Oh, that old excuse again, huh? <laughs> okay. A couple months ago, when we were in a meeting and we were finishing a project that Jody had uh, was working on, I had mentioned that I would like to start at a last year's appropriation and go from there to see what from the extra monies you're going to use it for. 
obviously we just we know what you're using it for now with the extra monies or the additional to your <coughs> budget what are you going to do with those monies over and above what you're currently doing for what purpose do you need those monies or if you don't it's fine with us too but the difference between which was uh, we had a 29 mil 650 or a total of 32 mil 076 796 and what is your overall request now? 3% uh, 3% 3% and what will that entail? What, you, what were you going to do with that 3%? Tim, with my colleagues indulgence I, I want to make a little very short opening statement. Okay. Once Kim made the decision to retire and we um, came to an agreement with our uh, town administrator, my interest in the details declined for the following reason. Once you imagine that Kim was the incoming superintendent, well, we're going to have an incoming superintendent. We don't know who yet, but as you know, there's a process going on. Since the budget is, as not me, someone I remember saying is the reflection of the priorities of the individual responsible for for running any department um, and since my colleague Kevin and I have governance responsibility but not management responsibility and since the school uh, policy allows for shifting monies all by themselves up to a certain point and then with the school committee approval, <coughs> the details of this budget are far less important today than they were because they are almost assuredly going to change as soon as we have a new superintendent. When that superintendent decides, these are my priorities, and this is what I'd like you to approve, and I know what this budget says, but here's how I'd like to make those changes and why. We haven't had that conversation yet. So the details of this budget other than the, the total number, which the town administrator and the school committee have come, and the superintendent have come to an agreement on, are just not very significant anymore. Is the committee I agree. Agree, agree I with him? To a point. It makes common point sense, though. It does make sense. It makes common sense. Oh, I understand the, the new superint superintendent coming in. We have totally different priority list. Oh yeah, it's, it's, no. the statement is valid. Yeah, I, I, I understand all that. At, at the beginning of a lot of this, in, in a, some of the terminology, I'm just gonna cut to the chase here, you got about another $2.6 million between circuit breaker money and COVID money going in. I would personally like to know where that's going. I'm not looking for, I, I'll, I'll break it down to how much, is any of it going towards administration? How much is it going towards teachers? Is it some of it going towards staffing in the buildings for whatever, you know? And what I'm saying is we could give you an answer based on our current superintendent, but as of July 1st, we have a new one, and he, she may have a totally different view of how to spend those dollars. Well, I'll, 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 I'll take where it's going now. You know, we'll deal with the new superintendent when he gets there. Or she. Or she, excuse me. <laughs> Can you give us some broad ideas of what you were intending to do because that's the uh, that's one of the jobs of the school committee as it is a selectman is to approve the budget we understand that completely and you know I do because I was sitting in your chair <laughs> okay not that many years ago well, I, I guess kind of getting to my point now you see, and I know this isn't going to happen no, I'm, I'm just using if you said oh we're going to put 75 percent towards administration well you know I would kind of take that like you're kidding you know, that type of thing. Yeah, so, I, I mean, would so be kidding. Yeah, I know. I understand <laughs> that. And I'm not expecting anything like that. But if you said, you know what, 10% of it's going to administration, 40% of it's going towards teachers, some of it's going to some support staff, whoever it may be for the students, uh, there's different things. And some of it's going to building staff of some sort. You know, it's... There are reasons I didn't articulate, but I will now. One is that the ESSER money about two million a year for the next two years, yep. okay? That is also a huge number. 
and has to be eliminated over the next two years. I understand that. We, well, we understand it even better than you do uh, because it's a direct responsibility of the school committee to make sure we don't hit a fiscal cliff. But that's also a huge issue. How you eliminate money, which is going to happen, is a huge reflection of the priorities of the leadership team of this district. So we are going to be extraordinarily interested. In fact, we might even ask that kind of question in the interviews, okay? Because it's a, it will have a huge impact on, on even the town because how many people are involved, how many people will lose positions. So that's critical. And the other critical thing, which I think we've said before, is that students are still recovering from the impact of the pandemic. So we're trying to support them um, using this money, knowing it's going to be disappearing also. So how we use that money to support the needs of our students uh, with all the learning loss that occurred during the pandemic is critically important. Kim has ideas, I respect those ideas, but she's just not going to have any ability to have any impact on it as of July 1. So the short answer to your question is, I don't know but someone who's an educator, a senior educator, is going to make a recommendation to this school committee and we're going to either approve it, edit it, deny it, whatever, and we won't know until we get those recommendations. And, and, that, and that's why I said support staff for the for the. I can tell you my philosophy is to have as little administration as possible and as many frontline teachers as possible so that the true impact of education is felt between the teacher and the student and not with the overhead that's sitting above that process. But that's a philosophical statement that doesn't really, I can't put that into numbers for you. And if I did, I'd be micromanaging the new superintendent. I think one of the issues uh, that I personally am more concerned about is the elementary levels and what the focus would be as with the extra dollars on that issue, because there's so many intangibles that occurred with the children that in a structured classroom, you don't necessarily knowingly or deliberately address, i.e. verbalization skills, social skills. There are some that saw their teacher for the first time when you took the mask away. <laughs> and, so the, and so many things are geared around their, their trip through the elementary levels, depending on when or how particular portions of their, their brain develops, how they have been <clears throat> absorb certain issues more readily than the, than the year before, things of that nature. And that is my concern in terms of spending the money on those areas because I won't call them that they're the spent areas, but they borderline on those needs that they, they deliver more professionally than a teacher in a classroom does. And that was really what I was asking here, is we all have our own areas. <clears throat> what were you going? What was the school committee's of philosophy or intentions of doing with those monies to support those areas? I monopolize the conversation. I'll let my colleagues speak. <laughs> well, I'm willing to monopolize a little bit more. Where it was brought up, I know, I know you're doing the candidates' interviews in a couple of weeks. Is that Next a week. Is it, was it next week? I thought it was two weeks. Is that a public hearing? It, it is going to be public, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I'm being there. I, that's why I, I had it on my thing. So what you're saying. Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to ask any questions. <laughs> Did you deliberately choose a candidate that goes out Martha's Vineyard or what? Oh, after the trip today to Martha's Vineyard, I can assure you that was not high on my list to take a cold, wet, rainy <laughs> trip to Martha's Vineyard. The only good news is it was calm. <laughs> well, uh, when I say public hearing, you're having an open meeting. I understand that. A public hearing, something is open. It's not a public, public hearing. Okay. But that, you that, will be able to I said public hearing. hearing. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. That there is going to be a meet and greet, though, for community members to ask questions during that day. That invitation is going out tomorrow. Uh, so any member of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions of both candidates. No, that, that'll be on the oh, days oh, of the interviews, on the 12th I'm sorry. On, on, okay. on the twelfth and yeah. the 14th. Everybody. I think it's, a, I, I'm not sure, but I, sometime in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I have questions. <laughs> so you're down to two candidates? Yeah. We had three and one backed away, backed away, yeah. so we're down to two, yes. Can you tell us the names of those two? 
Yeah, they're public knowledge. Yeah. Dr. Andrea Schwamm, who's an internal candidate, and Dr. Matt D'Andrea, who is the one on, from Martha's Vineyard. What, what is the head, what's going to happen to your head count over the next three years? It's going to go down. Why? Don't know. Give me a, I mean, 2%? Five percent? Well, the current budget, Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, is about 12 to 13, uh, re a reduction of 12 to 13 people just for I'm next. about students. Oh. oh. That's really difficult to know. I think we plot. Well, you better, you better have some goals out there. Goal? <laughs> yeah, our goal is to increase the number. But the, the short answer is we appear, emphasis on the word appear, to have, and Kim jump in, plateaued and are starting to rise again. And that's based, and that's based on um, elementary school in particular enrollment. Fair mm -hmm. statement? Yes. So you've got the, the, uh, the, the relevance. is going to be uh, much more accurate. And even more, not even more significant, also significantly is that although our, the number of children on SPED, i.e. with IEPs, um, is has been rising, uh, the percentage in our elementary schools is declining, uh, which is a really good trend uh, because the people who in high school, for example, will graduate and therefore we're, we're expecting and predicting an overall decline in the number of students with IEPs. That's good for financial reasons, obviously, because <laughs> uh, it costs more to educate kids with IEPs. But it's also good because it means something is working uh, to help us reduce the number of kids in elementary schools who need them. We also got some building going on, uh, significant building going on, new uh, properties. Oh, People yeah. In. Well, we know why. I mean, Wareham is still a good deal, even though things are rising. <coughs> still a good deal for housing. But I think anybody who drives by that elementary school says, well, this town is investing in education, and that's a good thing. I have neighbors who have two daughters. One's in first grade, and one's about to enter um, uh, kindergarten, and they're thrilled with the experience. And they're bright, professional people, and that's exactly you know, what we want for this community. And, and I think they're, they're indicative of the demographic change that is occurring in Wareham because it's such a good deal for housing and because they see people taking education seriously. Well, just keep investing in quality education. Amen. And just to, the, the actual time for the meet and greet for candidates for community members is 4.30 to 5 on April 12th with Dr. Schwarm and on April 14th with Dr. DeAndrea at the Wareham Elementary School. So 4.30 on both interview days, the 12th and the 14th. Now, but Jody, do us a favor. A half hour? No. The favor, I was gonna, <laughs> the favor I was going to ask is don't discourage either of our two candidates. No, no, no. They, I, it's nothing that's, <laughs> trust me, I, 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 I'm not going to say anything else. You're <laughs> for breakfast some morning, Jody. Jody do you want? Your reputation is wrong with you, Jody. <laughs> no, I had a couple of things to ask. Not, nothing controversial by any stretch of the imagination. It's just... I was kidding. As you no, I know, I know. I, I, it's, yeah. Uh, well, Kim's put him on a good platform anyway, both of them. We will, on Thursday after the second interview, uh, be publicly deliberating and voting. Just so this whole process will be done Thursday evening. Yeah, yeah I knew the voting was going to be an open meeting. That's why I asked for it was a public hearing. I, I it's didn't think it was. It's required by law. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I know a public hearing wasn't required. Uh, so, but I had forgotten about the meet and greet, so I'm glad Kevin again brought it up. Yes, Jerry. Can I ask a budgeting technique question? In the uh, expenses, are the expenses net of grants you anticipate to receive? Well, uh, and I'll be happy to answer the question, then you can correct me if you like. <laughs> um, uh, the short answer is the vast majority of grants are, do not uh, eliminate expenses from the LEA. They have, they have benefits because they give us money to do certain extra things. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in that sense, th there is no net. Okay? Yeah. The only thing that's net, really, is the ESSER funds. 
because we have to apply for them. We say we're, what we're going to use them for, and that those uses can be part of our normal LEA budget, and it's or expand our LEA budget uh, because they are specifically there to support uh, students as a result of the impact of learning loss and the pandemic. Okay, but that, those are unusual grants that actually take the take the place of LEA spending. Spending. Did I handle that correctly? Okay. <laughs> What then happens if um, the grants are not as much as you anticipate? Or, or what, when, when do you get a good sense of what the grants are going to be for the following year? Well, I'm going to let Kim answer that part. Uh, but, then, but I'm also going to tell you, you hit on one of my biggest concerns, and I've had them for over a decade, which is you get a grant, you fall in love with the impact, and the grant disappears, and all of a sudden you've got a person or a concept that you love and you have to find the money to incorporate into the LEA budget. That's, that's a, a real serious problem because it, it almost always means that something else has to go by the wayside to pay for that lovely idea that used to be supported by the grant. So that's the answer, I think, to the first part of your question. Then I'll let Ann, uh, Kim answer the second part. Um, we track our grants year to year so we can go back historically and look, we follow. What did we get the previous year? How does that compare to you know the past several years? So we know the ballpark that we're going to be coming in at, so we never budget the amount right to the dollar because it could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less. So what we usually do with any grants, and there are only very few that we use for personnel, uh, we also have other um, expenditures in that grant that we can either absorb or we can expand depending on what the grant comes in at. But it's, it's finding money if, if you don't get as much as you anticipate? Uh, did, did that ever happen? No. We've never, no, we would never do that because while we assume this is what we're going to get, and, you know, we start hearing things from the state. Uh, we start hearing things probably in July of what we anticipate the title grants will come in at. Um, but we would never have it right at that dollar just because you just don't know. I can even remember in years past, I mean, this we're going back a number of years, where the state would take the money back that you would c commit to spend. So, you know, you always. Yeah, yeah you've run about an average of between eight to 10 million a year. Yeah. And as Jeff points out, <coughs> suddenly if they decide not to do something, you've got a major hit in your program. Right. The other thing that we that you can see when you look historically is if they lower one grant, they usually raise another grant. So it kind of offsets one another. Okay. And then w one last question as, as, as far as amounts going forward. Um, stabilization fund going forward after, after fiscal 23 for the, are you using all of the stabilization in, or do you have some left over to carry through to fiscal 24? Yes, we have, at this point, there's no um, commitment to use any of the stabilization grant next year. If you're talking about SPED stabilization. Yeah. That's yeah. the only stabilization we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and then the ESSER, you, you, I think you said the figure already, the, to carry forward, you're, you're using ESSER 2 and 3 to the tune of 2.3 million this year. What do, you, what do you have left over to carry forward to fiscal 24? How much of that, roughly? Uh, roughly 1.8, 1, 1. 2 okay. million. Uh, two, yeah, about, about almost 5 million over a two year period. Okay. So well, Closer to four, but it's, it's yeah. a big number. And it's only two years. Exactly. And it's a big, it's a big one. It's a, you're looking at concerned citizens. <laughs> Just when you had the money to redo your office, you're leaving. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else, gentlemen? 
Uh, indulge me for one second. Uh, watching your school committee meetings, I know you're doing a lot of transfers tomorrow night. I would like to. I, I would like to see what. I don't care where they're going. I like to see what accounts they're coming out of and how much. Yeah, that's public. That's posted. Where? I'm not a real computer person, so I, I, bear oh, with yes. me. Yeah, I can show you, John. Okay. Thank you. That's in the, in the packet in the agenda. No. It's, it's part. It's part of the documents associated with the meeting, which means they're required to be posted. Yeah. No, actually, as far as your transfer, because both sides, municipal and school, have limitations. You can do up to what a ten percent transfer. Is that a limitation? There's a ceiling on it. We moved it. We this changed time. it. We just recently changed it, so I'm, I'm blanking a little bit on the actual number. Um, but it has to be within certain, it's within an account. Yes. And it's, a, and it's a maximum or a percentage. We literally just changed it, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the numbers. It's not something that's often brought up because your accountants take care of it. Anything else, gentlemen? Thank you. Kim, Kevin, Jeff, I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I understand that uh, yes is short term or you got there to deal with. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for letting us cut in. Sorry. <laughs> His eyes were closed back there anyways. <laughs> okay, Jim. Hello, everybody. Good evening, Jim. Good evening. Two things, Jim. I think um, on one budget, you dropped almost a hundred grand in a year, and then on some previous budgets, um, going back all the oh, let's say fiscal year 07, you were distributing about a five thousand a month. And we're up now to. I, I think they were collecting. FY15, you haven't uh, since. They were collecting about five thousand dollars per unit on the agreement they had on Carlton Place. Okay, yeah, the Carlton Street mixed development. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing else uh, after let's say FY12, 14. Collecting interest on 17, 18. You're just collecting interest. You're, you're correct. There are a couple of deductions in 18 and 19 that we don't have. Should be 100,000. Yeah, probably. No, we don't have notes for 4,000. And in. Here, um, well, 2020. The deductions in 21. The 21 is the 100,000. That's yeah, the Latham that's project. The, that's the project in Great Neck. The what was that? That's the house on Great Neck. That what's the uh, medical condition? The people there. There's a special overeating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the overeaters. Yeah. You know. yeah. It's it's at one six. It, it's up on Great Neck Road. And yeah. They they um, it was pre and me, before myself. Yeah. They agreed to uh, contribute a hundred thousand dollars to that project. Oh, yeah. So that was paid out. No. Yeah. The trust agreed to pay a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And the CPC also gave 100000 So we, we made a large contribution. The town made a large contribution to that project to provide five bedrooms. So currently you have uh, 137000 on deposit? Yeah, when that one thirty seven plans, applications, what are for those monies? What's that again? Do you have any... Projections. Um, no, no. Projections as far as what we're going to use it for? Well, do you have any, any applicants? Any plans? Um, well, we have people that come in, and um, a lot of times they're kind of fishing and looking what we can provide, and we can provide, well, and if we like a plan, we could provide some assistance. We'd but like you don't have anything on your table? Uh, we Correct. have someone coming in next week. Uh, we had no, no. We have no monies obligated. That money is free and clear. That one thirty-seven, eight something with the interest of the last. Like I said, it was like one hundred thirty-eight thousand last time I was here, so it was pretty close. So it's been a while since you've had any any request other than one hundred thousand one. 
Well, we've, for the we've past had some, years. but we, we denied them. Just considering, the, you know, you're, you're asking for money yeah, so I'm, you can increase your, your uh, balance, but you don't have any activities. I understand what you're balance. saying, but I don't, we, don't, we, we don't want to be in the point where we, util, we utilize the funds that we have and then we don't have funds to further help individuals or um, uh, or projects um, financially and have to start scrambling trying to get some uh, funds to do that. So we're trying to be proactive and, and like I said, take a little bite out here, a little bite out there. Um, and we looked, you know, uh, what is it? A tenth of 1% of uh, the town side of the budget of, of the school's budget? I mean, with all due respect, I'm just, I'm just saying that's that, but what it breaks down to. I'm just looking at the past seven years. And this is one, and, and, and this is uh, correct. And uh, for seven years, uh, for, for five out of the seven years, they didn't really have a quorum, a legal quorum to operate. We just, we just got that going. You know, not just a quorum, a legal number of members to operate. <laughs> you know, so um, now we have five. We're trying to make the committee a functional committee and have a vision and have goals. Dominic? <clears throat> to uh, not to agree or say anything, but you know, a committee to help the community, $138,000 is, isn't going to do a whole lot. You know, you know I mean, it's, it's, it's a small amount of money. Yes, they probably haven't had any activity, but I think to, to, I, to their judgment, there wasn't a lot of money there to really do anything significant either. Well, That's just my I, opinion. I think what I'm looking for, Dominic, from Jim is to tell me yeah, what they're that his do committee was it. was totally non-existent during that time frame, right. so we can't do anything. And now they're projecting, and that's what I want to hear. That's what and I, yes, that's yeah. what okay, I Okay, we got said. an organization. We got to go forward. We got some. Now we, we got more some money because what they have is there. People want to be proactive and all of that. Yes, I, I, people I stated that. We want to say yes. Yeah, but I stated that got, last time, and I just stated it again before you just did, that it was non-functional. I mean, you had a committee, but. Um, and like I said, just there's, there's things we'd like to do. Um, I reached out to um, Serpid, to Erica Bean, who has now left Serpid, I think. Yeah. So, and then I left a message uh, to, to get in contact with the person who would run the um, uh, regional housing office, RHO to see, because we'd spoken to this Eric Arbeen, who was the uh, staff person over there, wanted to have him come back and see exactly what they could offer us. And um, I'm, I'm still kind of waiting on that. Also reached out to um, uh, what's, what's the group um, that builds the homes, Habitat for Humanity. They sent us an email, so I called back. I emailed the person. Still waiting to hear back from them. They're asking if we could, you know, if there's any properties in town we could do something with this or that. So, as I stated, I believe in the email that I sent. That's one of the things we're trying to get um, either the town to do it, or we might have to hire a consultant to do to map out the town-owned properties that they took by tax title and otherwise that may be. Um, of use to create uh, affordable housing, affordable workforce housing, small uh, two-bedroom units, you know, on a little piece of property, and you get a deed restriction on it. Um, you put up the land, you, you do a, a public-private um, partnership on it, a developer comes in, uh, just like with an 40B, they can only make a certain percentage over the cost, which I think is 20% which I think is pretty generous. And then um, the occupants can get in at a lower cost than it would be otherwise, and they have to meet certain financial uh, limitations, I guess goals or limitations, in order to qualify. And they'd be in a lottery system. And um, they'd have uh, the ability to uh, get into a home, 
Jim, we don't currently own any, do we? What? Affordable housing, the town itself. No, and we wouldn't own those. We just hold, own deed restrictions on them. Yeah. Yeah, we have um, some of the town units through the Wareham Housing Authority. Uh, those are uh, those fall under the subsidized housing inventory, so the Housing Authority owns those. Um, Littleton, the Littleton, uh, the town donated the land that'll be privately owned. Uh, what's a 99-year land lease or something? Which one? Littleton. I think it's going to be a 99-year oh, land oh, lease. Oh, on that. Yeah. yeah that um, like but no, we're, we're not looking to own affordable housing projects. We'd like to be able to create them and, and possibly work uh, cooperatively with the housing authority or someone else to oversee them. We don't want to get in the business of, of overseeing affordable housing. We want to get, we want to assist people to reach the goal of either having their own home or being able to get into an apartment, um, their own home by, you know, they can do everything but maybe the first, uh, maybe the down payment and stuff. These are the types of things that we're looking to do. Some housing, uh, affordable housing trusts do a lot more and, and um, uh, we're not at that point or looking to get to that point. Jim, in the uh, properties taken by tax title, I know we don't do that often, but let's say in the past five years, any idea how much money that might have generated for you? I, it, and the, well, we didn't do any for two. The last one we did, I told you, was uh, 7 Apple Street. We would have gotten about $35,000 out of that. Would you? No. Yeah. That's after, but you have to remember, once they, they sell it, I mean, the town has to get their monies back. And uh, they pay all the, all the liens. Yeah, so um, it depends on what the outstanding balances are and whatnot. And um, well, we're just, again, we're just trying to take a little bite out of the apple. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for the whole pie. Kind of worked it out with Derek a little bit. He, I don't think he's, um, you know, and he is a financial person, and, um, and he doesn't seem to object to it very much. You what know, is the financing right now for the Affordable Housing Trust? Where, where are you getting your funds? We're that? nothing. We, we have had no funds coming in for years. Before they came in, if you look at the spreadsheet that was sent out um, from, from projects and from developments that were coming into town, someone was, was being proactive at that point in time uh, through the planning process to get these developers and housing people to make contributions. And we probably could tap, uh, we should have tried to tap some of the uh, marijuana vendors mm -hmm. coming into town. But everybody wants, everybody wants a piece of that money, you know? Um, you, you have 137000 Now, where did that come from? If you look on the sheets, when you're seeing the $5,000 back in 2007 associated with units, that's, that's income. That's Carl income. Wareham Crossing gave what fifty thousand or something. Uh, Twenty twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. So that's where those monies came from, and then it stopped. So well, again, I, I I believe. Like I don't know no. who was the planner at that point in time, or, or in the planning board zoning. They were. They they worked to extract some some funds from the developers. And it, it's just real estate people. Yeah, yeah in, in, in the you know, when they're coming in for the planning aspect of it and you know, it was kind of it'd be nice if you could do something, you know, sometimes they give a fire truck. Uh I'm go ahead. I, squeeze. I just wanted to correct myself. Wareham Crossing <laughs> did a hundred thousand over three years. Yeah. Yeah. So they're the biggest number. Yeah. The count in place was five thousand a pop over three years from number of units, right? I think Wareham Crossing for the town was a total of three hundred thousand dollars total for different parts of the town. You need to do something with the fire. And, and Walmart, yeah. under, we got three fifty. Yeah. They should pay. Yeah. yeah. But that's kind of stopped. Um, yeah, it looked like it stopped in fiscal eleven, the, the the ends, and then fiscal eleven through now is is some outs. And, and, I mean, there's interest income, not a hell of a lot. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, overall, it's you don't see that type of 
um, funding from these developers coming into the town often. Um, not You're as much totally as they were. Dependent were. on that, huh? You're totally dependent <laughs> on the greatness of a new developer like uh, Sonneberg has been in. They've got of late. Well, I was in FY12, but if you don't have a development going on, that seems to be your only source of income right now. It could be if they're willing to. If they're willing to. To donate I mean, or contribute to the town. And sometimes they don't have to. Indeed. Is, is, you know. Are you, are you presently getting 25% of we're the We're getting nothing. Seeds? Nothing. Zara. Nada. Nada. We get no income. So that's why we're looking yeah, to. That was mentioned no. to me too by yeah. somebody, but that's it's a, not true. I looked into it. It's not true. misstatement by someone. Yeah, I remember yeah, hearing that, true. but it's, I looked into it. It's not true. It, this is our it's third zero. try to get this on a warrant. So we, we finessed it different ways. First, we wanted 100% or 50% of all sales of properties. And we said we'll take 25% of all sales. Now we're looking for 50% of just a tax title. We'd like to, I mean, we'd like to get 50% of everything, but we're, you know. Well, if, if you don't get something, you might as well cease to exist because you don't have well, any we'll get, we'll get. Well, we'll get something eventually. One way or another. I no, mean, I it might not be this time around, but, you know, yeah, no. I mean. Are you applying for grants also? Are there any grants that are um, available? We will if we, we find some uh, that would be useful to us. If we had a project which would lead itself to that and it, does, and it fell in line with the grant timing, we would. Um, we provide grants. I know, but. I mean, that's basically what we, we provide grants. Right. <laughs> um, and you know uh, most of the organizations that we would be we are associated with, they provide grants. When you seek funding from from the town, you can get it through the CPC. You can get it from um, the sand haulers. Yeah, they could. That's, would you like to do that too? If we could just collect anything from them. You know, that's a, that's I'm, another story. I'm, sit, I'm sitting here, and I know the town is every town we talk about. We haven't got any money or tidy sack this and um, we're still going after other ways to, to get money why, why do we bother with something as small as this and look at our overall situation and figure out how to get more money in total we've got we're the lowest paid people in the lowest paid town um, in, the, in the area I mean, we've got job requirements up there that are unfulfilled. We've got to raise money. It isn't to do $25,000 or $50,000. It's significant money in the efficiency with which we operate. Right, but this is for a specific use, and this seems to be something that you know, when we do sell town-owned property, tax title property, there's some income coming in, and this seems like a a reasonable application and use of it. Well, that's how I see it. You know, it's it's usually for from unfortunate situations that uh, the town ends up having to take properties. So it would be nice to try to give back to people who may be in other unfortunate situations and try to give them a hand to get them into some place. It could be just helping them to get an old apartment. And hopefully they can take care of the rest of themselves. It could, like I said, it could be first and last. Uh, uh, it could be um, an emergency assistance. Or, or I'd like to try to do, you know, a big thing is to help working um, families, or, you know, who can pretty much pay a mortgage, but they just can't seem to get enough to, to, to have the down payment and the closing costs. Um, that's one of the programs we've talked about we'd like to set up. Um, but we don't want to use everything we have and then not be able to do anything. And as you've said, then, you know, the committee kind of folds up. Why are they there? Because they created it in 2006 or 8. So if you're going to have a committee with a function, then you have to have the ability to operate. You know, I, I read in your trust document, Jim, you know, it's a letter F, funds paid to the trust. What's it say? They, you know, they only allow, like, three ways you can get it. Uh, in accordance with any town of Wareham zoning bylaw, somebody has to give money to you, 
or an exaction fee, I don't know what that is, or a private contribution, which is probably all, everything that you received in a seven years, the contributions. So all you're kind of doing is asking for another source of revenue, which is 50%. You know, my feeling is, why the hell did the town vote this in if they're not going to fund it? I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I, 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 I wouldn't understand why if the town voters thought that this was a reasonable idea, why did they leave the authority high and dry without money? Well, you, you saw funding beginning. I, was Chuck, well, was Chuck Greekus the um, town planner then? I don't know if this then? was what they call by exaction fee. What are you going to do with community coming for it? Two o of uh, fiscal o seven. I think I think truck with Chuck was kind of. Yeah, I think it came from the state. <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah. No. With yeah, like hey, hey, I think the state and um. Is available to different counties. Oh. At this time, is a what we're trying to establish here is a legitimate source of funding yeah. that'll Anything. allow you to co source. well. It, the purpose of which shall be to provide for the preservation and creation of affordable housing in the town of Wareham for the benefit of low and moderate income households. You don't have a, the ability to sustain that purpose right now. Absolutely not. Like I said, you see what we have, and we have $60,000 which we can request release from, from the CPC. And we've kind of pledged that to... Um, for up to a thousand unit to to um, uh, an affordable housing project. You, you also got coming from CPA uh, CPA fifty k or sixty k coming. Yeah, that's what up, fifty thousand. But we have go to go right out to Woodland Cove. Correct. So uh, you up, got uh, up to up to. So you get, but they thought you were a good idea to begin with. Well, and secondly, it, you know, secondly, you only got up to if you spend it all, you only got ten thousand of that. Yeah. Of that and, and actually, I was going to extract that, um, uh, apply to extract that for the um, property that we, we we funded up there on Great Neck Road, and we could have just probably swept it out, but the committee wanted to leave it in there and use it for uh, the Woodland Cove. You know, I, I'm all for it, but I, I see a problem in the future, and I'll explain it to you. Now, I followed the tax title quite a bit because I bought some stuff. Probably 10 years ago, you know, you would see four or five units a year that, that they would take. Now, as the properties in Wareham have grown in value, to get a tax title, people aren't going to let their families lose them or anything like that because if the property's worth 200000 and, and, you know, they're in, they they got to put up sixty or seventy for the taxes, they're going to do it because there's a profit available, okay? Years ago, that wasn't the case. That's why you see one tax title this year. My personal opinion is the way the property value and everything is, is that you're going to see a lot less tax title than you did in the past, Jimmy. I remember seeing four or five a year for a couple of years in a row. You know, and, and, and like I said, yeah. I used to purchase, I purchased some and stuff like that. But I believe you're going to see less because they're not going to lose these properties. A we, lot of these properties were lost because grandma didn't pay her taxes and it was in an estate and all that. And it was fifty, sixty thousand, and no one in the family was going to put it up because maybe the property was only worth seventy thousand or fifty thousand. There was a little profit. But now, if they're into it for 50, 60, 70, by the time the town takes it, that property's worth 200000 mm -hmm. Somebody in the family's going to put up the money to make that profit. So you're going to see a lot less tax title, and that's just a personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of properties we've taken by tax title, but we have, we have not, to this point, put, in, put them to auction. The town has a bunch that they own already or they've oh, taken. We've take, yeah, we've taken quite a few. And then I you have to. I think there's too many in the pipeline, my personal mm -hmm. opinion. Doesn't I mean know. they'll sell them right away. No, I understand, but yeah. I don't even think there's the that many in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. I, don't. I don't. Do you I, have I, a number, again, Jimmy? No, 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 I do not. Um, but I know there's a, a quite a few of them because uh, sometimes when I'm on board, I'll go to the Registry of Deeds and 
Tana Wareham, and you can start looking TT, you know, tax title or redeem certificate. There, there's a lot of, why aren't we selling cars? Yeah, but a lot right. of the things that have taken my tax title are non-buildable. That's why people it's didn't pay the problem. taxes. They're wetlands, non-buildable. You know, unless you live next door and want to own it, it's worthless. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of that property. And, and, mm -hmm. and they're actually tax title liens. And so what I just said was there's swampland, wetlands, no, 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 non buildable right, right. stuff, and that, that's yeah. only worth anything to the neighbor. And, and it, even then, it doesn't matter if he owns it or he doesn't because nobody's mm -hmm. going to do anything with it. So the town's stuck with it anyways. They'd rather see somebody own it and pay yeah, tax. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I you, understand you're, what you're, you're saying. You're only going to get money. Or build them homes. You like know they what? Just We're sold. not counting. That we don't see this as a steady revenue stream. Well, it we have should no, be. I just don't think anyway. I just it's don't something think you can rely in a lot. That's um, all. So, so why are you for this? Well, I'm for it because I think that they should be funded anyway. I'm just saying I hope he's not relying on a lot of tax title money because I don't think it's going to come. No. Mm -hmm. Just an opinion. Um, I want. I want. I want to see him get funding. I mean, come. some towns like a, what for what they're doing. Do you think it's wrong for what they're doing? I mean, there's so many other more major things. I know, but he's not asking for a lot. Pardon me? He's not asking for I a lot. I know, that's right. So why waste the time? Why well, not go out and figure out how to get a lot? A lot of what? The last, the last time. Revenue. Uh, I said this last time, too, is I'd rather see them go and take, you know, instead of taking a bite out of the apple or a bite out of here and there, just eat the whole damn thing and call it a day. But he's right. They they need to start somewhere, and this is at least a start, a starting point. Now, and once they have the new quorum after this meeting, because that's one of the items on this meeting is is no, fixing that's not for us. Point. That's for the housing. Oh, that's no, that's for the historic, historic district and commission. Right, historical. Sorry, that's so not wrong. Saying, point, you don't, you don't think that but now they, they should have. get any money. You think the money should go all into the into the town cover? Hell of a pool. It's not much money. And he's spending, people are spending time on it. They're t interviewing people, the people that, that are donating subsistence time. level people that are going to take more out of the town, demand more for services out of the town than they contribute to the town. I mean, well, that's a true fact. I, 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 I agree with that, but there are definitely I mean, less. Uh, no, I, you know, I'm as cold hearted there. as anybody. Uh, what? But there is, there is, You're there are still people in need. There are still people in need. I am. There are still people in need. Overall, the petitioner is asking to establish a revenue stream. Whether or not it's going to be large, small, consistent, or whatever, the petitioner is asking that we start at least help them along. And perhaps there'll be another something else they'll see later on. Like, right now, that's all we're talking about. Town of Citrus establishing it. Their their housing authority out uh, affordable housing trust out with a six hundred thousand dollar kicker. Uh, town down the Cape gets ten percent <coughs> of their CPC. Um, so basically, they take the affordable housing part of the CPC funds every year, and that doesn't mean that they could not apply to or other other projects could not apply to um, the CPC for funds from the unrestricted. You know, for developments of whatnot, um, I've, I've discussed that with the committee members and a member who's on the CPC. Is doesn't really um, isn't warm to that at this point in time. So, I'm, I'm careful the battles I pick, um, and I try to do things strategically, and and cool, you know. Well, you've got a tough road to hold, Jimmy, because you haven't. That committee hasn't been active for several years, so word out on the street is that you don't exist for some point. So well, you yeah, have to be more proactive that's why, in trying to find That's something. why they would appoint them to me. They appointed me on it. <laughs> <laughs> go get them, Jimmy. Go get them. I, I, I had applied to that committee before I ran for selectman. I didn't get appointed to it. They left, they left the seat vacant. <laughs> Gentlemen, any further seats. questions? No. Okay. There being none, very good. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, next is Article 6, the Annual and Special Town Meeting Capital Planning. One is Article 6 and one is Article 3. However, uh, Jimmy's not available, but we have certainly a very dutiful uh, nominee to the committee. Yes. 
The capital plan this year is rather limited, and it's. Do you have them by um, annual or the special or just general? Uh, just general at this point. Uh, we have three projects that we're looking to fund, and they are roofing products, projects on town property. So we have three areas that we're looking at. One, which we all need, is the Wareham Free Library. And as the existing roof system is broken down, uh, second one is, uh, this one says, Senior Center, which is actually next door to us here at 48 Marion Road. Multicultural Center. And the other one is the old Hammond School. All of these are in need of repairs. Uh, we've had municipal maintenance go out and get some preliminary estimates, preliminary quotes. Uh, they were back in December of 21 and January of 22. So they're, they're recent, but again, with the increase in labor costs and material costs that we've seen, uh, we're looking at probably by the time these get implemented after town meeting, the costs are probably going to go up. So uh, what we're looking for is 1.76 million for capital maintenance on these three buildings. Could you go through them the again, roofs. David? Can you can you break that? Well, how, can you, you break them down? What's how much is each? The Hammond School roof and siding is that the one? Yes. Yeah, Hammond School it's under town, it's under town building. Right. Graham Free Library, right. and the third one you had. Let's see. Multi service building. Multi service building, and the estimates. Uh, these, the original estimates, and these are approximately 10% less than we're asking at this point. Derek requested <coughs> that we had increase these by about 10%. Uh, so the library itself is $6,664? Six $6,664. 6,664. Plus 10%. So another 66,000. 750? No, no. No, 60, 66,000 on top of that? Yes. 730. So that, yep. And uh, we have the old Hammond School. We're talking 580,000. Plus again, roofing is expensive, and when you take off the roofs on some of these old buildings, you have additional repairs that you have to do. Mm. So, is, is Hammond School self-liquidating now with the tenant they have in there? Um, no. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry. I see old of insurance and stuff like that. For old Right. The original estimate for 22 was a million. Yep. David, do those repairs in the building include uh, construction work on the buildings as well? Excuse me? Uh, yesterday, last, yesterday's meeting, yesterday, I thought they talked about the windows and some other stuff in each one of those buildings besides the room. There? Or am I wrong? Um, these are, there are some additional things that will be be done in such as shingling and. Um, yeah, so it's not just roofs. It's not just roof. Um, okay. If you go over to the library, you'll see the uh, moldings of the big windows, which really look nice. That was, well. Right. Someone was trying to win an architect award around and trying to make something last forever. Well, I think the initial yeah. intent was the roof and windows of the library. Windows, that's both side walls, you know. Right mold, now that's mold. not included. In the library, uh, it was remove existing shingle roof 
down to the wood deck and dispose of it. That's it. Install drip edge. Yeah. Install ice and water shield at all valleys, rakes, eaves. Install GAF felt buffer for remaining areas. Starter strips for all eaves. Install GAF Timberline Ultra 300 pound architectural shingles. Install a ridge cap shingles at all ridges and hips. Install a furnished GAF system plus limited warranty. Uh, alternative one was installing new gutters and downspouts. So in the library, there was no windows included in the estimate. No, I think it was just, had. I think it was some of the moldings up high where the water was leaking through. Mm -hmm. But there will be things that have to be done when you take a roof off yeah. for moldings and other, other aspects of it. Uh, I think the hammer screw had a bunch of work. Yeah, that's also siding on the hammer screw. Well, if you go to the hammer screw, you'll see why. Right. Let's yeah, see. Here again, the Hammond School, it was the, the shingle and roof system, gutters, downspouts. Um, then there's, that's the main roof, and then there's a low slope area, which again is having new roofing, yeah. the old roofing taken off. Uh, and I'm looking at it, and these are all really just roofing and accessories to the roof that they're, they're talking about at this point. Yeah. And what we're looking at for total, if I have my... Well, on the, the multi-service center. Yeah, multi-service multi -service center was 600,000. There is, uh, is that the HVAC or the roof? Uh, that's... That was roof. That's the roofing system. Just the roof? Yes. Okay. Does not include any wood decking replacement or elevator. That's not included in this. No, <laughs> no elevator. Was that thing failed once in three, four years? Longer than that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's been a while. And we've known it's needed re needed repairs or renovation for a period of yeah. time, but... Uh, David, could you copy us on those three pages that you have, please? Yes, I can. I Thank just you. received these today, so I will make sure you get copies of these. Please. And so the total we're asking for um, was, when we added this up, was 1.6, yeah, and then seven, six, adding seven. the additional 10% to take into account the increase in costs, we're looking at 1.76 million for the roofing on both on all three buildings. 760,000? 1.76 million. Very question. Now that is um, all on the special, because there's two, this is on the special for the annual, these three. Do you know? I don't know. All the money will, from this will be coming from free cash. So it depends on when he wants it to be. If it's on the special, he can do it before January, for uh, June 30th. Yes, yeah, to work. So there'll be no impact on the on our tax rate. Okay. What, can that be? If the Hammond, now they really haven't had a tender in there that's besides the Boys and Girls Club, and even then they didn't pay, the building didn't support itself. Why? Why is the town keeping it if it's costing us money? And now they want to put in another six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars that we're not gonna, you know, I don't know, why not sell it now before you do the work? I don't know if we can sell it though. Oh well, we can't sell it? Yeah, as a restriction on it? Can you get a clear on that? No, no, no. That that, that was taken by uh, in the domain for the land was just yeah. like just like the Deacon property. I'm, I'm not sure domain about the for educational purposes to yeah. build a school. So they both have that. <coughs> we can move to sell that if they want to. It's, it's, it's you provide, you're providing service for the community with the buildings. But it's, 
Dominic's so out we, there playing we, pickleball every day for fun. No, no, I, I, I'm not no, saying, not, you know, not why not split the land, you know, keep the tennis courts or whatever, sell the building. The building's not making us any money. It's you're costing getting, us money. You're getting some money from the school, the Donovan schools there. You're getting a lot more than you were getting on the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. But it's still costing us, though. It's a matter of see if they want to rent the other part of the building out. Okay. Yeah. It's a community no, that's a very, it's a very good point. Is it the other part of the building being used, uh, utilized by another organization in town? Yeah, over half the building is empty right now because the Boys and Girls Club is gone. Right, but that, that side of the building, that side of the building is being well, used by if Tigers. You, if, right? if you go down the road, the, 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 when we walk into the boat, that's the taller roof side. The lower side, on the other side, that has a nice entrance, that's the Donovan School. Correct. But the other side, which is where the boys the, the and girls The cheerleaders are in there. Yeah, the cheer, exactly. The Tigers, right. Yeah, they're on the, that side. Yeah, that the building, correct. So we, we're using that for community use. Yeah. Right, they're not paying anything. And I right. understand and that, the no. community stuff. And neither was the boys and girls club. They were like right. paying nine thousand dollars a year or something. No, I, I, I agree with but that. But I'm just I'm just service. saying that it is being, still being used for community. Absolutely. Community use. That that's all yeah. I'm getting at. Well, and, yeah. and, and I know we need those type of buildings, but y you have twofold: not making any money. Now it's costing us three quarters of a million dollars additional. When, as Tommy, my buddy over there said, the town needs money. Well, the town has a bunch of property it needs to look at to, yeah. to sell. And it, I think the town administrator is time to look at that seriously right now. Yeah. Um, can, I, can I speak to this? Or sure, no? go ahead, Jim. Oh, no, he can't talk. He's already had his present. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That, that's it's not, not political. On that building. Yeah. The and that's just to keep it from deteriorating anymore. Otherwise, it can end up like the Everett School. Um, and same with the roofs on the other two buildings. If you don't do it now, it's just going to cost you more going down the road. Yeah. So, and I understand your point, and, and I actually got some some numbers, which I was trying to pull up, for what, I think we're bringing $3,800 a month from the Donovan Center over there. At the like School. Yeah. And from August through this point in time, it's just like, you know, for the, uh, just the utilities now. You know, and I'm just, I, I ask for electric, gas, water, and they give me a couple. Of, it's just about break even. I mean, there's no monies for, to put into it from the rent for improvements. No. So, and the boilers are ancient. There's no sprinkler suppression in it. No. Um, you look at the outside, it, you know, they, it needs an uplift. So. This this is the beginning, and when you do the what was it five hundred and something thousand, yeah, well, and that's the estimate. Yeah. So, and then you look at what you're going to have to do moving forward. Should you make a decision? Yeah, you probably should. Want you you're going to go all in and try to make it a, a functional facility for the town, or you, you you keep it from falling into total disrepair, like the Everett School, which is a architecturally a nice building, you know, one right up there in Gibbs Street. But the roof was leaking, and then the, Mold. you know, on the floors, and then the drop ceilings start to fall, and the other ceilings start to fall. And the floors are good; it's still good structurally, but it's it's basically a gut job. So the value could have gotten far previously. Now yeah. it's gone. Well, we sold the Everett School, correct? Not no, yet. It's not it yet. Going up we had a buy. Then we had a buyer for the Everett School a few years back. Am I correct? No. I thought they were sort of looking into purchasing. It was, uh, when Sal was here with the uh, planning stuff, uh, Sal wanted to take that building and uh, lease it out to a bunch of nonprofits, and it never came to fruition. It's the only time that building is seriously there. Remember, the school had that building for administration. So, so we got to sell the Everett? Yeah, I think the auction's going on another month. I think it was delayed. It was delayed, I understand. Yeah, because it's signed out front now, I think, next month. Next month, yeah. In the uh, East School, I'm not sure what's happening there. There may be a restriction there also. Well, the West School, the West School building has a, a lot across the street that the town owns also. Okay. And that's got some real value, and that really something should be done there. Which is that? The West School, with the piece of land across from that. Yeah, and they're trying to, that one had a, uh, a restriction on it. Yep. Where you have to give the uh, Acorn Inc., which was the yeah the people who own the uh, first option, Trim, Trim what now? refusal. Yeah, 
if you go to sell it. So if you want to buy it, you have to say, well, you know, you put a bid in on it, whatever. You have to give them a first option refusal. So we're trying to clear that up. So if, they, if the town does go to move to sell it or whatever. Yeah, you have to check this. You're not going to do that at the time of sale. Just a statement. Okay. Just curious. Okay, any other questions? Anything else, uh, David, that came up at the meeting you'd like to? No, that was, that was the only item on capital that they were talking about. I think they said that they would probably come back in the fall town meeting with yes. a much more serious uh, capital plan. Right. And be using whatever free cash we get certified. Plus That's what typically what is done. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have to wait until free, free cash is certified. It usually comes around November, December. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. For any any other questions? If being gone, move along. We'll go. Uh, these three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and I had sixteen, which was my error. Is, uh, Matt is already going to be writing up the info on that. <clears throat> if information available. Same with the STM. Those are uh, moneyed articles. I talked with Derek earlier today, and he has advised me that he will have that money's of, uh, information available by Friday. <clears throat> I'll make sure everybody gets the information. Um, as far as inputting that information, practically, it, it's just a matter of putting it into the computer because we just print out those charts and all. Uh, with the exception of, of course, uh, there's certain opinions, <sighs> but generally speaking, it's a matter of, matter of uh, entry, but uh, we haven't even heard the numbers yet. So we we'll hope next Wednesday we should have all of that information, I hope. Uh, recommendations and votes, and we need some volunteers, of course, but uh, let's see, on the annual town meeting. Uh, it's the, the ones that are missing. Now, Article 18 is the special legislation that Jim is sponsored for the Affordable Housing Trust. As we've heard him, uh, Jim has been three times. Thank you very much, Jim, for taking that time for, to be with us here. And so, on a recommendation, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Move to recommend. So. Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? 3200, not 3800. There being none, I ask the clerk to call the roll, please. So, Tom? Just the mouse. Right, right that down. Right down. <laughs> Thank you, Jody, for reminding me. <laughs> you're, you're, you're so on top of it. Yes. 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 Okay. Dave? Yes. Bernie? Yes. And myself, yes. Matt? Yes. Don, yes. Okay. Six, one, zero. I'll write it up. Thank you. Um, uh, after this, we have um, the bylaw amendment. Norma, Norma asked to do that. We're referring. 21 and 22, 23 and 24, um, I think, uh, how about a motion to refer? I'll make a motion to refer to town meeting. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Anyone, any questions, concerns? May I have the clerk uh, call the roll, please, for Article 23. Before we, before we do that, I have a question. Yes. So, we're not going to vote, approve, or not approve, just say report to town meeting? Yes, one well, is the committee. We've really never done that that way before. If you would like, if you'd rather do it someplace, uh, make a comment on it, certainly we can do that. Because everyone looks at how we, how we, you know, by no. referring to town meeting. I mean, one of these is a big, is a, to me, the, the is only a big difference is these are citizen mm -hmm. petitions, that's all. Yeah, but. but our Dominic, if you are, feel the committee, that's perfectly fine. You no. Know, let me just put, put this out there. It, mm -hmm. it's, everyone looks at how we vote. You know, we're going to say we refer to town meeting. It almost means like they didn't want to vote on it. 
Maybe it's no good. You know, I think it's putting out the wrong message. That's all my opinion is. If we vote on it, I think it gives people more. Gives them some direction. Exactly, David. Thank you. What do you I think? Agree with, I agree with Don. The only the exception I would have if it's a non-money issue. There's no money involved whatsoever. I don't but know. There is, well, no, but there is. But well, yeah, there, there is. There is money involved there. There, there is. So I think we need to take a yes. eventually. Yeah. Take so in that case, may, I, may I ask yeah. then, well, the motion? Uh, Just so. withdraw it, I think. It would be better. Well, let's refer Article 24. Because we don't even know if that one's even going to hit the floor. Which one is that? About the reports. Uh, that said, oh, that, yeah, yeah. that required okay. the report. The very first line, um, two years ago, The Attorney General, on an on a article, turned it down, and it was Article 19. Of the October 25, 21, and Article 19, vote to amend the bylaws. Uh, boards and meetings and hearings so that they had to listen to somebody at the time and the AG said they uh, we are a legislative body and cannot tell the executive body how to transact their business yep. being all encompassing in here listening to them uh, at the uh, their meetings if it interferes with them doing their daily business it is their decision to do so and in this case uh, they are saying in the very first line of that report that the town meeting is instructing the executive branch to allow the steering committee and this foundation to have access to the building and tour it. And that is not, that is an executive decision made by the administration. And the um, town meeting cannot make that decision for the executive branch. That's, um, so that's going to throw that. So that's oh, twenty three. So we'll, we'll, we'll vote to refer that one. And that way, if they throw it out, no, that, we'll that's back. that's the one with the budget and everything. It, I think the question was about the reports. Okay, about, about forcing them to, to give the report. Yeah. Right, that's twenty three. I believe is the report. I, I thought I thought I had that as twenty four. I thought I had it as twenty four too, but um, I mean, that's 24. me. I'm pulling up, checking. <laughs> I thought there was. Let's see if the town will hear the report of the deacon. You're right. 24 is the report. That's the one I'm, I'm looking at. I, I had a reverse. So I, my apologies. <laughs> make your motion for that one. So, yeah. So, I, I motion that we, we refer Article 24. You've got to read. you got to take out the other one. We're in the middle of 23. We'll just oh, withdraw, withdraw your I'm going to withdraw it. I'll withdraw no, my second, second on 23. Okay. So, so, there's a motion on 24 to refer the town meeting. Correct. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? May the clerk call the roll, please. Tom. Four. Jody. Yes. Dave. This is to refer. Yes. Oh, this is 24 to refer. Okay. Yes, 24 to refer. So they're going to yes. do the reports under five. Dom. Yes. Matt. Yes. Myself, yeah. <clears throat> Seven. <clears throat> zero. Zero. I think 23 we should vote on. I hate to agree with you, Don. I know. I know. I know, I, I know you're not my friend anymore. I know that. No, I, 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 I definitely see where he's coming from. Okay. Say, I agree. Yeah, the first line, see if the town will act favorably on the DECAS Steering Committee report, namely providing the Steering Committee and DECAS Community Center Foundation access to the building, assist the town preparing the building for occupancy, and by moving council on aging to DECAS school building, and it goes on, et cetera, et cetera, all telling the executive branch what to do. And that is a direct violation of the separation of the legislative branch and the executive branch. So you think they're going to they're throw both 23 and 24 out, you think, Bernie? No, 20, 20, uh, this one, uh, 23. Yeah. Because of that, we cannot, the, the uh, town meeting cannot tell Derek what to do. Okay. So... We've already given them the ultimate authority. To, to, to keep consistency, I'm going to make a motion to recommend for discussion. 
I want to talk oh, about we're going to discuss it anyway. We don't need a motion for that, uh, Jody. Yeah, I'm making, I'm making a motion to recommend so we can just vote on it after the fact. So just for us to have a discussion? Yeah. No, in the vote. In the vote. In the vote. So you make a motion to recommend. Recommend. Second. Now, I'll comment on it. <laughs> and I, and I heard everything. The you discussion. Said. Yes. I heard everything you said, and, and I understand all that. I kind of knew some of that, but I have a lot more problems with this than just that. Yeah. Which one are you talking about? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Uh, Twenty-three. Okay. The one year you just went into the whole attorney general thing. Yes. Come on, Brady, keep up. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean. I was shocked to see these two articles come out this time. I thought this was all going to be put off to the fall town meeting and a lot more thought and process was going to go into it. I mean, they got $15,000 to bring somebody in. I, I would, I mean, there's no report to see to what this building is even workable. I mean, that was the whole idea, you know. So, I mean, I have, I have a lot of issues with this besides that, and that's, a, and I'll stop there. I, I, I'm right there with him. Even if it was to, for some reason, get past the Attorney General and they were to, to think, the, I don't think the building is ready for the occupancy they want to use it for. It's got uh, multiple issues throughout the building. It's uh, multiple bathrooms that are out of order. Uh, a heater unit in the B-Wing, that's that's that blue, and that's one unit. Every, and it's the same age as every other unit in that building. So if one's gone, what's the chance of the other one? So somebody needs to go in and look at this stuff before we start putting people in it. Yeah. And, I, and I, I haven't been in, well, I've been inside the building, but I drove around it a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, the ramps were added after the fact, well, you know, you know how things went. So that they're settling. There is a lip. Right. Well, the so ramp some of these on, things need to be fixed, because if a walk is going to get over it, but I'm not so sure a wheelchair would get over it all. The, the ramp, ramps on, like, the side of the building and stuff. Right. But they multiple would, ramps. They'd use the front door to... So it doesn't mean they have to. you got to have an right. egret for the emergencies yeah, and, and things like that. There's two of them on the front. But, um, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff in that building that they need someone to go through that building. I mean, the school department had the building beforehand. They put the brand-new boilers in, and that's a big point that they keep making to us. Brand-new boilers. Now, I went in for the, the tour that they did, where they invited us along for, um, and I was talking to municipal maintenance. They had $800 worth of pipe repair right. over by that new boiler because they were putting a five-gallon bucket underneath a leak and emptying the bucket every day instead of repairing that pipe. So that pipe leaked for Lord knows how long hmm. before we, the town got his hands on it. So how much more in that building is in the same kind of disrepair as that? Well, the, the, the real issue the is... A valve pipe, it was $800 repair before something that was leaking that they knew was leaking before... That's not unusual with these. Well, it's, it's not. Usually, how many other items in that building are in the same I've district? I've been through it a half a dozen yeah, times. Excuse me. You know what? Yeah. The committee is discussing this because yeah. there's a motion on the floor. Yeah. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> well, I remember uh, Kim telling me they were constantly running uh, the humidifiers through the building because of the humidity. Mm -hmm. And that concerns me is uh, at this point in time, it's sitting there. And mold could be growing, so we'd have to have that attended to. And it's speculation on my part, not that I've seen it, but I can remember when we went through it prior to putting the roof on to the causing of it, and the teachers were showing us where their material would they, uh, let's say, you used in the beginning of the year, that halfway through the year, since it's been in storage or in, within their classroom, it itself was beginning to develop mold because they were no longer using it. They'd use it in the first part of their teaching yeah. process and all. And that, but it, it would have to, from my point of view, the building would have to be examined by someone who knows it and evaluate its condition. I agree. If we're gonna have a rental or rent it to adults and children, does it need any ADA upgrades? I agree. I agree. Uh, that's an issue. And these are all unknowns and Secondly, what else have they addressed? I'm hoping in their presentation that they'll have alternatives that they're evaluating. What would benefit to be a benefit to the town if they decided just to sell it? Now, what we would what would we do with the profit? New roof and door and windows on the library, upgrade the uh, multi-service center so that uh, we can move some offices out of this building 
into that location. Upgrade it so it's in better condition for the yeah. seniors to use. When, uh, there, there, yeah. there's, there's another issue there that, that you haven't brought up. If the town sells it, the boilers were, so much money came from the state. We haven't, they haven't been in there that long. We're gonna have to give that money back out of the sale. No, we've already given it back. Yeah, we've already, already given it back. Yeah, yeah we, when uh, we built the uh, new, new elementary school, uh, they okay. took the money back. Okay, then. okay, okay, that was a, another thing is, the seniors are in the multi-service center now, and you're gonna give $600,000 to put the roof over there. So, you know what I mean? You, you, you still, you know, you want the seniors to have a good place, you're willing to put $600,000 over to here. Why not invest some money for the in, in for the seniors over there? I, I'm for the move, but that's just my opinion. It's more a case of, in their presentation, mm -hmm. have they evaluated these issues? So I'm not, I just no, say I these understand. are the things I like to hear yeah. them say. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I agree with you. And, and the way this is worded is, uh, is to hear the report, but also to move them in. It's not according to the report, it's let's do this now. That's what that's the way the, the article's written. Yeah, the whole if issue. It's, however you want to look at it, right? Okay. Yeah. I can understand everyone's point of view. One, I just think the seniors they, need a better place. They haven't looked at, at least I don't believe they have because I don't find any evidence in their documentation. Timeline. April 25th, we vote our budget. We allocate every dollar we have somewhere. Now, if they're proposing to do something, irrespective of what monies they may or may not raise, we have to appropriate the, the amount of monies necessary. Let's say it's 500,000 to run that operation. They say we can get a rental that'll reimburse us for that, fine. But we have to appropriate that 500,000 because Tom, if I hire you, I'll pay you 50,000, but I also have to pay you another 30,000 and benefits. And then two, you're gonna have to open that thing up at eight o'clock because they have programs going on. And and turn the alarm off. And at ten o'clock you have to go it's back a, in and turn it off. It's a baked idea right now. Yeah. Thank you. I want to see some issues Correct. that they have thoroughly Correct. examined Correct. and have I encountered agree. them. Um, Derek has uh, set aside two hundred grand. That's the expenses and of whether the only one's in there or not. No, that's, that's the municipal maintenance. His option is whether they're in there or not, he's going to have to pay the utilities. Yeah. Yeah, now, he may be reimbursed. No. No, he may be separate. reimbursed, but whether they're there or not, he has to pay the utilities. I agree. And so he's billing that. He's setting that aside. Right. And that's practical. So a year goes by because when we appropriate monies again is a year from now. Because we're doing tilling, we're talking about operational funds, not money coming out of free cash to make it run. And we appropriated a year from now, and at April, he's got another four to five months before January, or excuse me, July 1st comes that they can spend it. So we're a year and a half away before he, the, any operation can occur, as far as our budget is concerned. Can something else occur? Of course. We can, maybe we can do it, maybe not. But if how we do business, typically, that's our cycle. But they're not asking the town for money. No, they're not. They're not. But but, but we have. Uh, but, what's that? How does it get run? The time being, they get no money coming in. No, they're they're asking. Yeah. They're they're raising money. Yeah. They're raising um, money. But it doesn't make any difference. It's it's town property. But you're assuming, Bernie. You're assuming they're going to need money, and that's that's. Uh, Maybe the practical way to look at it, but that's not etched in snow. No, no, no. As I said, the two hundred thousand that Derek has set aside. Yep. I mean, as far as money's coming in, fine. But I'm saying, in order for us to have Dominic, if you were going to start a business, you have to have money up front. Sure. And that's where the money has to come from. Now they have, they may have people coming in and make up contracts, but we have to make sure we can guarantee the employees and the stability of that facility with our dollars that is replaced by the monies we get for rentals. What? 
you lost them with the employees. What are you looking at employees for? The, 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 the Council on Aging is already running over here. Council on Aging director, two years ago we made her full time because yep. that's what we but wanted her to do. it's already on the budget. She's got a contract. It's already well, on the budget. You're not, yeah, you're not gaining a new... But, but she's, she's not a facilities manager. In the morning, you need to, you need to staff the... the Municipal the maintenance building. is there enough already. Pardon me? Municipal but, maintenance is there enough but already. That's, they, but they can't... Okay. We have so to have you're, a, looking at, you're looking at a minor charge. Okay. All right. You yeah. have to have a facilities manager. Okay. You need to remember that the, this town property still, mm -hmm. at this point, and the town administrator has control of all town property. Right. That's one of the issues. So there's no guarantee for anybody. I'd like to see a community center if it's possible, but there's no guarantee that property's going to be turned over for that. Mm -hmm. I understand. I mean, because we're, and that report, as you already discussed, was supposed to be part of the town meeting. That when they get done, that committee is done at that town meeting with the report. So I think if I didn't misunderstand last week, they were going to change from a report to just an update. Yeah, they don't need to do their report till the fall. By law, yeah. They're treading a very fine line right. with yeah. that report. Right. Really but, looking, but this isn't. You're really looking at the fall before something can really happen. And we're we're looking to act before we hear a report from the steering committee by a, an organization outside the steering committee. This isn't from the steering committee that's trying to put this forward. It's citizens. No, I understand that. Right, let's let's uh, vote. Have we completed our discussion? Let's vote. Well, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I set my two cents. Well, you're on the floor for purposes of discussion. Discussion is complete, and the motion is dead. Can I have a motion? To, would you like to uh, refer? Make oh, a comment on it? We already made a motion made to approve. Motion. There was a motion for purposes of discussion. No, no, no. 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 Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Discuss it. We discuss. Now we're at the point of now, now, we, we, now, we, we, now, now we, we vote. vote. Yeah. Nay or yay. Now we vote, Tom. Yes for number twenty three or no. And we're voting to refer? Uh, approve it. Approve. Oh. Approve approve Article twenty. You can't make a positive motion. It's by what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Approve the Deca Steering Committee? No. No, DIGA Steering Committee report, yeah, namely including the Steering Committee and the, the DIGA's Community Center Foundation access to the building to assist the town in preparing a building for occupancy. Move the COA. Move the COA over to it. Mm. You got to draw it better out for me as to what the heck we're going to. It's gonna telling the executive portion of our government what to do. Do you want the counseling on aging to move you, in? I thought you said we, we couldn't do that. We can't. We can't. That's why it, uh, that's, I'm saying that's it's... That's why we're voting on it, either yes or no. Is My vote is no. It, it, town it, it town meeting does not have the right to... It doesn't float. Town meeting does not have the right to do yeah. that, so you vote no. I would say advise voting no. Okay. Right. right. Town. You want to read, you want to read the... Uh, you want to read the... <laughs> no. Jody. No. <laughs> Dave. No. Bernie. No. Me. No. Matt. No. Ber Yes. <laughs> oh, surprise. Well, you knew that was coming. Oh, yeah. nice. I mean, I, re I respect I got an old man, and, and I don't yeah, know. I just think, so I just think the elders in our town deserve better than what they got. So, so nobody, anything that points towards a positive motion for the elders in this town, I'm for. Whether it's got problems, issues, or not, I want to see him try. That's well, the end of my conversation. Well, and elders, I might be totally wrong. What about the elders that are right next door here? So that was one that six zero. horrible over there for them. <laughs> what? Counseling on aging where they are right now. You want to take a recount to be sure? <laughs> the whole building. Uh, I'm not going to go in there. No, I wouldn't put a dying the dog in there to have there. fun. Okay, next one is the special town meeting. Again, with the uh, S1 through S4 are uh, all moneyed articles. The uh, one with uh, S9 and 10, I uh, talked with Gary, and there's a duplicate, and we'll get rid of that. So S9 is going, S10 staying, correct? Because S9 was 4,000, S10 was 4375. 
Um, there's yet, and there's another so 60 for the mats. Yeah, that's that a does with that. That's out a of those two, argument. correct. What, what about, I listened to this last night. I felt bad for Gary because he didn't know what article number you were talking about because he didn't have the warrant. So yeah. 14 is out now on the, on the annual town meeting because it's duplicated on. Mm -hmm. no, for, not 14. Um, so they were talking about S9 and S10. S9 was for $4,000. S10 was for four thousand three seventy five. Was fourteen both on the, both the both. annual. And fourteen on the annual was four thousand three seventy five. Was a duplicate. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're so we're only doing S10. They Correct. We're doing the ones. Fourteen on the so S9's on the, out. So S9's and fourteen out. Fourteen is Correct. out of the town. And fourteen on the the, annual. the regular warrant is out. Correct. There's fourteen on the, on regular, the regular town warrant. meeting is out. S9 on the special is out. S10 covers both of them. Yeah. Motion to approve. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that's that's there we go, Jody. Motion to approve. S10 is it. written. Motion is made and second. Is on S10. May I have a clerk call the roll, please? And we're doing uh, S10, Tom. Yes or no? Yes. Jody? Yes. Dave? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dom? Yes. Matt? Yes. Myself? Yes. 7 0 0. The um, S5 through S8, I'll write that up. Doesn't require, oh, so. doesn't require any thinking, so I'll do it. The um, S10 is self-explanatory, I would think. Has to pay his dockage fee, yes or no? I'll write that up. Okay. Um, S11 is the rescinding of the article. I was hoping Peter would show up tonight, but we'll go with him next week. He wants to rescind a previous um, bylaw. We voted on that last week. Yeah, we voted on that last week, and I said after the meeting, I still don't know what I voted on. Let me see the scratch. Yes, sure, we did. Right, we did. Um, and Norm, six, and uh, Norma agreed to uh, write that too. Two six zero. And Norma. Uh, modifying the quorum. I don't think that needs anything really. And the length of the lease on S fourteen. We had uh, Ken here this evening. Well, it was the first time. Okay, we want to, if you want to do that, typically we wait to wait a week, but I'd be grateful if you do it today, this week. Second. Jody moved. Dominic second. Clerk, call the roll, please. Tom? No. Jody. Yes. Dave? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dom? Yes. Matt? Yes. Myself? Yes. So it, that is a what, 610? 610. Wow. Six, zero. Anyone interested in writing the uh, recommendation? <laughs> Norma will do that. That's right, she ain't here. She we ain't wonder. Here. We <laughs> wonder. Uh, the next one is S15, which we heard this evening with Nan. Motion to recommend. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion further? Questions? There being none. Clerk, call the roll, please. Tom? Yes. Jody? Yes. Dave? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Yes. D Matt? Yes. Myself? Yes. So that's 700. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. You put an awful lot of time on work in this, and <laughs> considering you're up against the state legislature. Who, who, who knows less about what they're doing? Um, I, I make no qualms about, you know, going head to head with anybody or anything. But, you know, you you just anyway. put your head down and do the best you can. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. We're lucky I, to have you, kids. Well, this, 
you guys are all putting in your time for for nothing and doing a lot for the town for a job that is generally not very well understood or thanked. So, thank you. I go up where there's we have some 35 committees. Average of five per committee is 175 approximately people, all volunteers, all naive when they have first walk in the door and they do the best they can. I and thought and I the, was getting the paid. Town, the town could not operate Check the mailbox as tomorrow. a volunteer. You're right. Absolutely. We do a pretty good jam job of it, I think. We do. Uh, one thing that, and I, this is totally an aside, I don't know if when the town applies for grants, if they can count the volunteer hour, the volunteer labor is, as um, any kind. Uh, no, they can't. Mm. I bring that up only you because it's nonprofit. You can count town labor. Yeah, that's what it's yeah. The S-16 is Revolving to add revolving accounts. I reported on that. Mm, nope, I don't have a note of it. I'd act, I'd act, I still don't have the actual. Okay. We'll do it again. Make, make a motion to recommend. Second. Motion is made and seconded. May I have a clerk call the roll, please? Can it be the discussion? What accounts are we talking about? As a need to know basis only. <laughs> um, we'll tell you after the town meeting. <laughs> we, we had I've heard about that. that. It was um, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. It was for the golf course and for the Vegas. I'm going to check. Million for the golf course and 750000 for the Vegas, I believe. Yes, I can't find my paper. I had it down. I you were going to ask. Ideas. The million is a max for revolving. Yeah, max. I, million, I, I'm sorry, million. max, yeah. Yeah. Tom? Yes. Jody? Yes. Dave? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dom? Yes. Matt? Yes. Myself? Yes. Se seven zero zero. I'll write that one up. That uh, does not affect our tax rate. Uh, and there's no monies that are being put into the account. That's S-16. Yeah. And something, um, Dominic. Yes, sir. Not to, uh, I hope I can find it. Not to try and change your mind. Oh, I know where I got it. Yes, sir. In the S, uh, not S, excuse me, the 801. Yes. I looked up, uh, I called uh, John Foster and... What he told me regarding just the information, FYI, not necessarily trying to change your mind. That's okay. But let me get 13. The place they currently have, they pay uh, around 45000 in taxes okay. a year. It's a nonprofit place. They also play, pay 5000 a year to CPC funds. Because like anyone else with a tax tax bill right. they got a separate line item there okay. so over the 10 years they've paid uh, 50,000 so far and with another 10 years so they're repaying 150,000 and then this that's the main unit because of course the second one the uh, unit they're proposing is a very much smaller than that that's just right. an FYI right. but they are paying right. monies and they have um, but is that written in the new I, it, I didn't see it in the new project that was in the old project, the yes. original 801. Correct. I'm That's just not, but that language for the CPC money and all that stuff isn't they in They never the got CPC money for the original to, to construct 815. Right. The new project is 801. The new one that's written? The, the new one. one. It, has, it has that stipulation in there? Right. It's not a stipulation. They're the it's same. It's a regular tax bill. It's a regular tax bill. That's the regular tax bill. It, this is their uh, it's a copy of their regular tax bill. Can I see that? Sure. Regular tax bill. It's not a, not a line item. It's just what's going to happen automatically. Um, also, there's a uh, the, the chief has sent out a press release uh, regarding 
the issue of uh, the, the events that occurred on onset that are going to have to be canceled because of his lack of staffing. And <clears throat> in December, when the governor signed the police reform bill, one of the little fine prints in it, whereas a former officer or auxiliary officer had to have some 300, 200, 200, 300 hours of training, which they could get relatively easily, not a problem. And then they could become a part of an auxiliary or a, like a summer officer, things of that nature. Under the new bill, they have to have some 800 hours, which is equivalent of a regular policeman. Some of them, uh, they come in, they'll get around 600 hours, and then they can be hired as a new hire, as a police officer, and then go to the academy and they'll finish all their uh, requirements as an employee of a police department. So that is, and we don't have that kind of money. We had about between 60 to 80,000 in the budget to fund summer police officers. And considering- it Ain't gonna happen. It isn't gonna happen, right. And so that means a large number of activities, typically the uh, you know, the I music festivals, etc., are not going to happen unless they pay for it themselves. Yeah, because consider that no only not only applies to us, but the sheriff's department, whose be deputies we used to use, and they had summer help coming on. Even our uh, police departments contiguous to us, they also have the if they have an onslaught of summer help, they could show you their officers will come over to us to help us and like they're no longer available. So the public on it in a way shot themselves in the foot. Because <coughs> I remember Jody and I out of Stoughton, they had a very active auxiliary up there. Mm -hmm. And they even had their own uniforms and all. And so but they can't even use those people do it anymore. unless they're retired police officers. Falmouth is trying something new this year where they're doing um, uh, a citizen, almost like a citizen's watch program that they're using to help uh, watch the beaches and so forth throughout the, the town of Falmouth. Um, and I heard a couple of people asking about that as well, but that'd be like hiring a, an overpaid meter maid, in a manner of speaking, because all they can do is write a ticket, and if they see something going on, they can call the police department. Yeah. That's all they'd be, they wouldn't be able to intercede or help. The only thing that makes me nervous about that, though, they're wearing any kind of uniform, and if somebody thinks they got any kind of authority, whether they have it or not, yep. they're a target. We'll see how we'll see how Falmouth does with it this summer, and then yeah, I mean it's, it's, it's concerning with all that's Stop going on in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, let's see how it yeah. works. It's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 I agree. Hmm. You know, we had in Austin, they had like a watch program. Yep. People down there, the school would do it with. It was a nightmare. Yeah, worse than a nightmare. Town had liability issues. Oh, indeed. You have to think, no matter what we do, plus, plus the liability. The police chief has already said no. You know, it's his department. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, that. We're just going to support him the best they can. They're trying, they're trying to work with what they have. Yeah. Well, you know, he wants 60 to 65 officers. He's got quite a bit of funds now. You know, he, yeah, I give him credit for, yeah. for saying this is what I can do and this is what I can't do. We're busy. Uh, he, made a, he made a good point. You know, in 2010, we had 47 police officers on the force. We have 44 today, and our population is 10% higher. Yeah. No, we have, they haven't grown enough to handle our yeah. growth. Plus our volume has exceeded well, 5,000 yeah. 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 He needs a minimum of 10. We've, it's, it, we've got some major problems that got to get, get addressed. Uh, yeah. WP, uh, we're ham the sewer Just department needs a minimum of seven. The ambulance to get the third one on the road full time needs a minimum of eight. And every, oh. uh, they need they need a minimum of 10. So the school department's got a bunch of extra teachers now. <laughs> That's what so you can he's got, so I, 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 don't even want to, I don't even want to go into that. I was doing a list with municipal. He's got five cemeteries. He's 54 miles of beach. Well, not 54 miles. At least five beaches. 180 miles of roadway. 3,000 uh, storm drains. Cemeteries. 
Every time, of course, someone passes, he has to send someone over to dig, out, dig the hole. Uh, coming up Mother's Day, his whole crew is going to be up there doing the cemeteries. Make them look nice. Get it ready. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's, you know, more, more. It's, it's, yeah. it's Memorial Day we're thinking about, not Mother's Day. <laughs> but he comes up with a... And he, his, Mom, his, I've got to go <laughs> to the cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. Right. His, his objective is he starts Monday morning and he has object an objective. And his objective is to get it done by Friday so we can do something else the next week. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Bessie Park. The grant that uh, the federal government is working under requires in-kind mm -hmm. assistance. And that's he's helping them when they have to do some excavating and like. I think, Park I think, I think, I think we lost that. What did we? Yeah. That was the one we were going to have a rain guard and stuff. In yes. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure we lost that. In Onset Park, um, they did a presentation. I can't remember if it was at the your group or somewhere. Anyway, there's work being done on that park. The theater across the street, hopefully we can get that started. And Onset won't have a lot, but all that requires in-kind help. And with his 10 people, he tries to do the best he can. And he does it pretty damn well, too. The manager's pretty good, yeah. Can I go off the rail here a little bit? Again. 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 I well, we have, we have people here with a lot, been in town a lot longer than I have, because this was a question that came up for Monday night, and I said I wasn't going to put it out there because it wasn't fair to the candidates. But I, I, I know what I think. Sewer bills. I've read four different stories as to why it's not based on usage. Why isn't it based on usage? Eric, I'm in a meeting. I'll tell you that. They have to be able to measure the usage. There's a way to do it. Well, they have these things. I mean, right, I was MWRA, which nobody wants to pay those rates. Water comes in, water goes out. It's that simple. I wouldn't even let my kids wash their cars in the driveway. It's just, you know, all I can say is that when the selectmen basically gave the old the sewer committee when the charter changed, did a forensic audit and turned it all over, and their charge was to, in the next couple of years, come up with a, a, a reasonable and fair EBU rate. They could do usage yeah, if they could get the inf information from the provincial committees. Yeah, water departments. What I did was, to give you back history, I went to Onset to the water department there, sat down with the people, and said, we need this information in order to make this thing happen with rates. At that time, they agreed to, to help us. Uh, I spoke to uh, uh, Jay Tamagini, who I think has been the chair of the water department for Port, the water hemp side for quite a while. He was a little, the, the water, they were a little resistant to give us information because they were concerned about you know, personal information, et cetera. But I think they finally kind of agreed to it. Uh, the sewer commissioners came in, I'm not gonna go into the description of who or what, but the, 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 well, the sewer commissioners came in and they somehow found a way through um, not very tactful discussions, blew the whole thing apart. So for at least three or four years, nobody would agree to give anybody information. Because you have to have that for the water department. You can't just go in and say, we're gonna get the information because you have to take their system, convert it to your system to figure out how you're gonna do it. It can be done. And I understand all that part of it because, I mean, they're able to get their fire bills over to the town side to get it on the real estate bill. So I understand the two different systems and getting the information in. The easiest, the easiest way to do it is you have, it doesn't matter how much water comes in, is to have a meter of some kind of flow mechanism for you if you're on sewer because you're basically coming out to just measure what's coming out. What these grinder pumps are going to do in Swiss Beach. Yeah, they have to. In Swiss Beach, the problem is going to be this 170 grinder pumps, I think, going to have to, you know, give to people and they, after that. But every one of those grinder pumps, uh, yeah. almost everybody in that area has, uh, you know, and I put my sump two pumps. Cents in. And the sump pumps destroyed. Yeah, no, I'm not. Okay. It's two cents worth. Two cents worth. There's only three towns in all of Massachusetts that's still on the EDU system. That should tell you something that it's archaic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Only three in all of Massachusetts. That's number one. Number two is every person in Wayham benefits from the town sewerage. Cleaner water and everything. 
only a little over 52 or 53 percent pay sewer bills. Mm -hmm. So the other 47 people are getting clean water and everything. What happened? Wait a minute. No, don't say nothing yet. I think there should be a minimum payment for everybody, whether you're on sewerage or not. That would keep the sewer bills and give the sewer plant more money and keep it in check. So even if you're on septic, you should pay something to the sewer system because you're benefiting from it. That's my two cents. When well, you just pump out the septic, what happens? But not all septics are pumped out, Tom. Only with an excess of use. There are temp houses that have septic that don't get pumped out for 10 or 15 years because it's not an overuse. Yeah. Not everyone pays that bill, and I agree with you. So then you can have a deduction if you that pay for sewerage to get out and you take it off your bill. And I understand that, that's a valid point. But I think everyone who benefits from something should pay for something. It, just to add a little bit to what you just said, people use, and I'm a perfect example, less water. So you are saving clean water. Because I, you don't got to use, but you don't got to water your garden as much, maybe. In the EDU system, okay? My father lives alone, he's 91 years old. How much water can he use? He's paying the same as his neighbor who got five daughters that shower twice a day. He's paying the same amount of money. Is that fair? No. Thank you. Leave it alone, Joe. Leave it alone. I'm already up. Okay. I'm on. I'm on septic. Talk all day because I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't think it's fair. We have a laundry mat, and they we get charged an EDU and a half for every machine. You mean to tell me that machine, that laundry machine in Onset, uses one and a half times that lady's house with the five girls showering all day? No, it's not a fair system. That's why it's archaic. That's why it's only being used by three towns in all of Massachusetts. Like no, that, and that's and that's and why and I brought it up because I don't right. think it's fair. For, you, your father is a perfect example. Yeah. Okay, can I have a motion? Yes, to, to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? You mean you want it? You're done. No, no, don't get me violent. <laughs> <laughs> Motion's made and seconded. Right. Any yeah, discussion? Right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. much. Uh, school department. I, 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 thank, thank you very much. much. <laughs> <laughs> um,